two-time Hall of Fame inductees, Brent Godarzy and Marty Young. Back-to-back -back number one trucking firm in the nation. Back-to-back -back best attorney and best law firm in East Texas. Crowley Funeral Home has been serving families in Gilmer since 1883. Funeral director and Gilmer High School graduate Troy Murray leads the professional staff at Crowley Funeral Home and is committed to providing dignified, respectful, and compassionate assistance to every family in their time of need. Crowley Funeral Home feels strongly about maintaining high standards of excellent service while still keeping prices affordable. At Crowley Funeral Home, we treat your family as our own. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the campus of Texas A&M Commerce, where your Gilmer Buckeyes get ready tonight in the quarterfinals or a regional final against the Caddo Mills Foxes who come into tonight's game undefeated 12-0 after the big upset victory against the Pleasant Grove Hawks last week. I'm Todd Robinson, your host for tonight's pregame show, joined by the voice of the Buckeyes, Jeff Rash. Jeff, it's amazing, but these Buckeyes are now four rounds deep, 12-1 on the season, and uh, ranked third in the state of Texas, uh, and right where they want to be in the final eight. Uh, it's going to be a great game tonight, I think, here, a regional final against Cattle Mills, four rounds deep in the playoffs. You expect to see a great team, and I think that's what we're going to see here tonight. Yeah, Todd. Well, it's like we said, if you're playing past Thanksgiving, you've done something well. And But I can tell you tonight's going to be, if you like football, don't don't leave the, your television set or your computer or your smartphone because this should be a blowout. Gilmer picked a five-point favorite by Pigskin Prep tonight against Caddo Mills. But uh, let me tell you something. They've got an electric team. Uh, they are undefeated. They come into this game 12 and 0. Gilmer comes into this game I 12 believe, and 1. Are we 13 and 1? 13, 13 and 1. And uh, so they, this, this team puts up 500 yards of offense in a game, half on the ground, half on the uh, in the pass. They've got a great quarterback, some great running backs, great receivers. And uh, this is going to be a battle tonight. No, no question about it. Yeah, it all starts and stops with number two, their quarterback in safety. That's Tyler Townsend. Uh, and he's everywhere, Jeff. He is going to be scrambling around. Probably 40% of their offense, Jeff, is a scramble drill. Uh, he's elusive. He will extend the play with his feet. Uh, those receivers will go into their scramble routes and force the defensive backs to cover, you know, six, seven, eight seconds long. Yeah. Uh, and then he can run. He's very quick, um, uh, but he really kind of plays point guard on grass. Yeah. Uh, so for the Buckeyes tonight, everything really is going to be designed around cutting that head off that snake, which is number two, Tyler Townsend. And make no mistake about it, Caddo Mills is a talented team, Jeff, as you said, you know, in terms of skill positions, mm -hmm. in terms of defense, but more importantly, they're confident. You know, they, you know, you look at their schedule and you say, wow, you know, Canton scored 42 points against them. And, which know, means nothing. Yeah, which means zero. It means nothing. But they beat Pleasant Grove last week, and uh, they earned it. They beat Pleasant Grove. Tyler Townsend played an incredible second half. Uh, he did it with his feet. He did it with his arm. Uh, and they got by the Pleasant Grove Hawks, which was unexpected. And they come in tonight undefeated, and they think, hey, Gilmer beat Pleasant Grove on a last-second field goal. They've got a lot of, lot of momentum A lot going. of talent, yeah. a lot of momentum, and they believe. And right now, it's going to be about Gilmer coming out, and and this should be the case four rounds deep in the playoffs. Gilmer simply got to play four quarters of great football, and you know you're two weeks, 14 days from now, on December 18th, somebody is going to be in Jerry's world playing for a state championship. Uh, and at the at the end of the day, when you look at the region to the north of us, Salina playing Graham tonight. I think both of these teams here, Gilmer and Cattle Mills, would match up great against both of those teams. And you got to say. The likelihood that the winner of tonight's game getting into the Final Four and having a shot to go face somebody from that other you know, region of doom 
Uh, you're talking about China Spring, you're talking about Wimberley, you're talking about Navarro, and of course you're talking about Carthage. Uh, I mean, man, eight great teams left. Everybody kicks off basically within the next you know, 45 minutes. And four hours from now, we're going to take eight really good teams and we're going to cut them down to four great teams and then we're going to get after it the last seven days of the season. Yeah, to, that's to exactly right. And, and this is this is where it gets really exciting. I mean, all through the playoffs, obviously, there's a, a new refreshed energy that comes in when you get into playoff season and you start eliminating those games. But when you get down to that final eight like we are right now, there's just an energy. We have a huge crowd on both sides of the ball tonight. Uh, everybody's traveled extremely well. Both schools well represented uh, in the stands tonight. Thousands of people listening to us at home tonight. And uh, so this is just, a, you can feel the electricity in the air, the cheerleaders, the band, the drill teams. Uh, everybody's fired up, got a lot of good music going in the stadium. So this is gonna be a great game. The key to the, tonight's game is just really, we always talk about the keys of the game. They're always about who's gonna control the clock, who's gonna have the fewest turnovers. Those are critical. When you get to game four, turnovers, one turnover. One turnover in a game can make the difference for sure. A fumble, uh, a lost fumble, uh, an interception, any type of, uh, even a, a two-point conversion over a, over a uh, uh, an extra point attempt, all those are critical. But in t tonight's game, there's one key to the game. If Gilmer wants to win this game, and they can, they have to do one thing, just one thing. Stop they got to contain two. number two. <laughs> Stop they they number literally, two. and when I say contain, they have to be able to protect the outside because he's great at scrambling. He does just like Brandon Tennessee. He likes to roll left and right. He can throw across his body. He can throw with a run. Uh, and he's also good at sitting back in the pocket, waiting for things to develop in front of him, and then doing a quarterback draw. He is not afraid to tuck it and run. This is probably the best quarterback we've faced all year, and we faced some pretty good ones. Uh, this is probably the best one. Uh, certainly one of the top two if not the very best and he looks a lot like Brandon Tennyson on the on the field he runs he's fat he's got he's real fast he can throw a ball he can run we have to contain him to the outside and we have to have people linebackers sitting in the middle of the field waiting on him so he doesn't bust the draw play and if you can do that tonight you'll win this football game because he, he is he's their heart and soul Jeff and it's not like they got you know it's not like Gilmer where he got two three four five six seven eight weapons he's the guy he is the absolute guy, and if you cut the head off the snake and, and you go score, because I expect tonight we're going to be here till 1030. We start at 7 because yeah. we're going to see footballs, bodies, everybody flying yeah. all over the field. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of passing in this game It's going to be a roller coaster ride. I think a lot of points get scored, but I tell you what, Jeff, look for every single little thing. Special teams, Cattle Mills is going to look for every angle. They come in as the underdog tonight, Jeff, but they got nothing to lose. They're undefeated. They're believing. They beat Pleasant Grove. They think, hey, you know what? We're not scared of Gilmer. And you put that together with a Gilmer team that at this point had 160 yards of penalties last week. Those are the things that Gilmer cannot have happen when you look at being able to say, hey, what's it gonna take to win this game? That's what it's gonna take to win the game. It's gonna take one of these teams playing as well as they can play. Hey, if Gilmer plays well tonight, they have a chance to win. Cattle Mills has gotta play the best game they played coming off of the best game that they've played all season. Well, and we have to really watch, you know, what happened to us last week, a lot of penalties. And, of course, you go back and look at the film and you go, well, we earned some of those. That's right. We didn't earn most of them, but we earned some of them. And tonight, it can't be that kind of game. Somebody needs to talk very politely to the refs and make sure they are on our side because uh, uh, penalties in the game, turnovers in this game, and the inability to uh, contain the quarterback, number two for Caddo Mills tonight, uh, th those are the keys of the game. That's all you got to do to win this game. And if if we can successfully contain number two, Gilmer could win this this game by 21 points right, or more. Yeah, or they more. could. If we can, if we have a good defensive game plan and our boys execute well tonight, we could literally beat them by 21 points. But it's all about containment it, and and execution, Jeff. And at the end of the day, when you look back at this team, hey, two weeks ago in Lindale. When we were watching this team play, 13 for 13 in the first half, three and outed them on every play. Now, we were playing a, a team in Canton that was nowhere near as talented as this team. But we know for, for a fact that this team is capable of coming out and playing extremely well to start a game. We've said this is a second half team all year. Well, you know what? What we can't do is come out and get down to a good team, make mistakes, and have to climb out of a hole. We got to put them in a hole early. We got to put the pressure on them and say, hey, 
we got a lot of kids playing both ways. Number two will never come off the field for them. He'll play every snap at safety. He'll play every snap at quarterback. Yeah. He is the and he's conditioned. He can handle it. Yeah, I'm looking absolutely. down. I'm looking down on the track at uh, Luke Watson, number ten, who's had just a spectacular year this year on both sides of the ball, but especially defensively. He's committed to a full ride down at SFA, and we're super proud of him. He's going to be a big player tonight. He's going to be a, a key to this game. Him and Matt Burton on the outside, the left and right side of the ball tonight, keeping that quarterback contained inside. And then Jet Jones, you're going to hear his name probably a lot tonight. If he can do what he's done all year long so effectively, get his reads, make sure he sets at home in the middle and keeps him that quarterback from drawing up the middle, the, the, the Buckeyes have a great shot at it. We're going to take a break, folks. They're going to go to the national anthem. So we'll be right back after these messages. Gilmer National Bank is your hometown community bank, serving people in East Texas for over a century. We are your neighbors, friends, and partners in making this a great place to live. Our employees make us a special place to do business. We are there for you when you need us. Come by and see us and find out what makes people say, that's my bank. Gilmer National Bank, an equal opportunity lender and member FDIC. Hey, East Texas, Matt Darby here, and I serve as one of the pastors at New Beginnings Baptist Church in Gilmer and in Longview. Let me ask you a question. Are you looking for hope in your life right now? We believe that the answer is Jesus Christ, and every Sunday we fix our eyes on Him and we worship Jesus together. I want to invite you to one of our worship services at 8, 9, 30, and 11 in Gilmer and in Longview. We'll see you there. At Farmers Insurance, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a rock and wreck. Yeah! He rocked and rolled right into it, but we covered it. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. All right, uh, Jeff, we are here Jeff, on the Jeff, campus Jeff, of Texas A&M Jeff, Commerce, Jeff, and we have, as you can see down in your lower left-hand corner, a massive, Jeff, wonderful Jeff, scoreboard Jeff, with replay. Uh, we will try to have that on as much as we can. Tyler Townley and number 12, Mason Hurt, captains that are going to meet at the field to determine the outcome of the first battle of the night, which is going to be the coin flip. And... Uh, Jeff, I think the Buckeyes really don't care whichever way it goes. They just want to get off to a good start. Beautiful night here tonight. We are in the mid 40s. It is clear, crystal clear. No wind, essentially no precipitation. It is a beautiful December night oh, in Texas for high school football. Oh, it's a perfect night for football. football, buddy. Round four couldn't be any better as Mason Hurt at midfield there. Uh, a little taller, as you notice, uh, than uh, Tyler. He is uh, 5'11", 100 and 80 pounds? 165 pounds, actually. I gave him 180 pounds on the coach's show, but he's he's listed on the on the chart as 5'11", 185. I thought he was 6'6", six, six even 180. He's not that big a kid, but, buddy, don't let him fool you as Gilmer wins the toss. We deferred, Jeff. And we deferred to the second half, which means that we're going to be kicking off to the Cattle Mills Foxes. And uh, so Buckeyes kicking team, getting ready down here, and... Todd, I got to tell you, as a as a proud papa, this is pretty cool to watch your sophomore down here on the sideline getting ready for this game in round four. This kid's spoiled; he doesn't know it. Uh, I would have killed to go to round four <laughs> any of our four years that we were there. Never saw round four, and here he is, first first time at the big show. So, uh, pretty cool deal, and uh, I'm so excited for these young men down here. The coaches, the job they've done this year is just it's just been remarkable. It's been fun. To watch and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you we've been kind of hinting around at it but I'm gonna tell you this, this is the this is probably my favorite year no matter how it ends this is my favorite year of, of watching Gilmer football it has been an absolute blast Alan Metzl's done an incredible job this year with these boys all the coaching staff has just done a remarkable job these kids have a great attitude uh, they got a lot of try a lot of will and they have battled through uh, a tough year with COVID and they have made it all the way to round four, and I just simply couldn't be happier for our town, 
our community that supports these guys week in and week out, our fans like Miss Sharp all the way out in California that's listening tonight, never misses a Buckeye game. We've got fans that's been watching literally in about 30 different countries this year. It has been an amazing year, and this is going to be an amazing game as number 20, Hernandez, the big leg, comes in here and kicks one deep, going to be fielded on the five, and this game is underway. Returned up the middle, Buckeyes on top of them. Great job defensively. Number 31 for the Buckeyes gets down there and makes a stop right at the 20. And that was, uh, I'm looking at my chart here, it's dark in here so I can't read it. Somebody with good eyes. Yeah, that's Michael Colbert, sophomore, running back in safety, pulling up. And so we're gonna see now Tyler Townsend and uh, just how talented he is. They'll run the spread package, Jeff, a little bit deeper snap than you're normally gonna see, which is gonna be trying to offset that Buckeye blitz. And the Buckeyes are gonna come out and play three deep and play the pass, and here we go from East Texas, or Texas A&M Commerce. All right. Tyler's off to his right side, looking to pass. He's gonna wants to scramble. He's under pressure. Throws one dangerous pass. Throws it out into great coverage. There are four Buckeyes around. That could have easily been picked off, but uh, they get lucky on that one. Great contain. You see number 24, John Choice, out here in the linebacker position. He's really spying the quarterback when he when he bails to that side. And you see that three deep secondary. Brings up second and 10, 0 for 1 for Tyler so far. Here's the snap, handoff up the middle. Got room to run, he gets about a six yarder on that one, and it is third down uh, and here for the Foxes. The Jeff. They're gonna try to go ahead first off in this first series, get them in third down and four, and they're gonna try to make sure that Tyler Townsend does not pick this up with his feet. They're gonna go man to the outside. Let's see what happens here. Townsend in the backfield by himself and uh, checking off. They wanted to get a sneak peek at the defense. He is calling an audible, and this is probably gonna be a quarterback draw. They think he's good for four yards here, and look at look at Burton spying on him. Drops back, looking to pass. Got a man open, picks up the first down. And they just play underneath soft. Uh, that's the number 14, and that's a pretty easy pitch and catch underneath to the zone. The Buckeyes fake blitz there, only really wind up rushing three and trying to keep everything underneath and uh, Tyler Townsend reads that well and just takes his spot, picks up the first down now for Cattle Mills uh, from their own 29-yard line. That pass was complete to Alex Dumeyer. You're going to hear his name some tonight, a wide out for the Foxes. One back in the backfield. Here's the snap. Drops back. Launches one down the sideline. It's a go route. Could get picked off. It, it does. does. Are they going to say he got it? He says incomplete pass. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds, but that was number two, Jaden Griffin, who made a very clutch interception in the end zone last week, and he uh, got under that one and yeah, easily picked it man, off. And that's the tallest receiver they got out there at about 6'4", and Jaden Griffin about, oh, let's call it 5'9", is man-to-man -man on the outside. Now they roll the safety over to help there. That's Dylan Flewellen. Brings up second down and long for Cattle Mills. All right, here's the snap. Look at the pass. They dumped the same uh, pass they completed earlier that was good for a first down. That's number 14. He's just stepping right outside of his inside receiver position, going about five yards. And so far, uh, they are uh, being effective with that. That was Alex Dumeyer again. Instant replay right there, Jeff, and an instant replay. Third and four. Let's see if the Buckeyes get pressure on this play. All right, Fox is looking at their sideline check off. They do have a back in the backfield, and they may try to run for these four yards, Todd. We'll see what they're going to do. They're going to hand off up the middle, and the Buckeyes hit him before he gets to the first down marker. Fourth down, Buckeyes. It's going to be about fourth and one, fourth and maybe two, fourth and two, and they're going to have to punt. So the Buckeyes do a great job right off the bat defensively getting the Foxes off the field and keeping them down inside their own 40s. Now so, two, uh, things, two things to look for, Jeff. Number one, Caden Davis, the senior wide receiver, is an absolute boomer as a punter. I was watching him in warm-ups, Jeff, and I'm telling you, he is he is one of the best punters that we've seen all year. Uh, number 17, Rowan Flewellen, standing back in his own 30. Buckeye's just gonna make sure that they get this punt off. All right, straight up in the air, it's gonna be about a 40-yard punt. Gonna hit the ground, doesn't take a, 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 a Buckeye bounce. It doesn't take a fox bounce either, which is great. That ball just kind of set up. So the Buckeyes, we've literally flipped the field. Buckeyes are going to take over first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Let's see what Tennyson 
and the offensive unit has in store for the Foxes. 9-13 left in the first quarter. Black Flag comes out and does its job, Jeff. They defer, win the toss, and, and come out and stop Tyler Townsend and the Foxes force a punt. And let's see if the offense can establish an early rhythm here. Great field position, as you said, Jeff. Now first and 10 for Brandon Tennyson and the Buckeyes. <clears throat> All right, we got one back in the backfield. It's the sophomore Haynes. They're going to try to run Tennyson right off the bat, and the Foxes get back there and say, no, thank you. They're going to drop him right off the bat for a loss of three. That's going to bring up second and 13 for the Buckeyes. Well, they're going to test the Foxes, and they're, they're, they can run, and they're going to force them up from the secondary. They run a 3-4 scheme, trying to get those linebackers into space. You notice only three guys up front. Uh, and then they play the two safeties back deep. Let's see how the Buckeyes attack it. All right, they're going to hand off up the middle. Haynes trips, finds room, busts one out in the middle, all the way out to the 47-yard line. And the sophomore finds a way to keep his feet under him. Jeff, he's not a sophomore anymore. Yeah, he, he just he got is, promoted. He is a Buckeye flat out, JV running back all year long. But after the last three games, He's now the starting running back for the Gilmer Buckeyes. Yeah, he's done a great job uh, running the ball for us. Brandon Tennyson drops back, looking to pass. Got a man open. Unbelievably dropped by Rowan Fluellen. Would have been a first down. He, Rowan never drops those passes, ever. He just tried to run before he caught it. And uh, that's going to bring up second and ten for the Bucks. Yeah, you do not see that one as Rowan probably makes a move and, and makes a play for the end zone there. Uh, but uh, the Buckeyes right back to the attack. That was a strike from BT to Rowan. Trip receivers to the right. Quarterback keeper up the middle. He's got room to run. He's going to get the first down. BT picking up 10 with his feet on a quarterback draw. And uh, right now we are within the first 10 play scripts, Jeff. So all that means is that Gilmer's setting everything up, just showing, showing these foxes everything, counting the guys yeah. in the box and saying, whatever you do, we're going to counter it. And so far, the Buckeyes driving first and 10 now from the Foxes, 42. All right, Eight Buckeyes left show in the first tight quarter. package. You haven't seen them that much this year. Rolling to the right side, looking downfield to pass. He's in trouble. He's going to have to throw it away. Smart move by BT. And uh, he does not take the sack. Um, lives to fight another day. They actually had number 14, Dylan Fluellen, on the back corner route. But BT uh, is going the opposite direction. He would have had to plant his foot and throw. Uh, and uh, decided just not to take that chance. That is a smart play by Brandon Tennyson. Not taking the sack, bringing up second down and 10, obviously four down territory here. First time we had seen that set this year. Buckeyes send three receivers right, one left, one back in the backfield. Here's the snap, hand off to Haynes. No, fakes the handoff, gets batted down. Fake yeah. the handoff to Haynes up the middle, pulled up the pass and it gets knocked down. And that's gonna bring up third and 10. Uh, we had number 10, Luke Watson there on a little curl route and uh, he had all kinds of room. But four down territory here, Jeff, for the Buckeyes, no doubt. This is the opportunity for the Foxes to try to get off the field here. Now watch, watch Rowan across the middle right here on your right side of your screen. Pulls back, looking to pass. Fires toward Rowan, almost intercepted. The safety dropped it, thank God, because that was an easy uh, interception that he just literally drops. Yeah, we're not coming off the field here. This is fourth down and 10. And uh, I, I don't think that, that BT really got the snap that he was expecting because I don't think he threw that with the laces. And it sailed on him a little bit. And to your point, Jeff, they were very fortunate not to have a turnover. Let's see if the Buckeyes can actually convert here on fourth and 10. All right, here's the snap. BT looks back, drops the pass. Forced to run, headed upfield. Can he get there? He's gonna be short about a yard. Maybe, maybe he got it, depends on the spot. That last push, he got a little help from his offensive line. I think depending got it, on Jeff. the spot. Nope, they're gonna say Cato Mills by foot. BT, great effort there upfield, and uh, they're not gonna give it to him. They're gonna say Cato Mills. No, they're gonna measure this, Jeff. I think they are gonna measure this. Yeah, well, our coaching staff says you may be right, you may be wrong, but we're gonna make you. We're going to make you recount. Yeah, this is going to be an automatic <laughs> this is a recount. So uh, they're going to move the chains out here. Are they? No, they're not. That's a gain of nine and a turnover on down. Boy, that was a that was certainly a close one. But uh, that's what's doing. We got a quid pro quo here. Both offenses trying to figure out. Okay, where's the seam on the defense? Looking for that chink in the armor, and uh, neither one of them have found it quite yet. Number two. Rolling to his right side under heavy pressure. 
and he's going to be forced out of bounds. Loss Maybe. of about three, Jeff. They're going to call that a loss of one. But nevertheless, Townley unable to get the corner. Number 44, Big Cat Matthew Burton in hot pursuit from the backside and great coverage in that cover three downfield. And I think that's the Gilmer strategy on defense. They're going to play three deep in the secondary, keep everything in front of them, and say, if you're going to pick up yards, we're going to try to keep you uh, to uh, uh, in front of the chains. All right, they hand off up the middle, and there's nothing there. They're going to hit him in the mouth. I think the fump might have been a fumble on the play. Yeah, that's Arona coming up from the outside, and you know what kind of reputation he has in terms of being able to hit you. Ooh, I'm telling up. you what, Todd, the Buckeyes looking good tonight. I mean, they are really looking very well coached up. And they know this is a big game, and they're playing every down like it's a big game. Watch number 14 on this play, Jeff. Inside, he is uh, in the inside zone here. They got this triangle package against three receivers, and uh, see if they try to get it to 14 on the outside. All right, Townley in the backfield by himself. Rolls to his right side. He's under pressure. Looking to pass. He's in, and he and he has the throw down. Intercepted. Oh, intercepted. Goodness. Just almost picked off. He. I can't believe he threw into that traffic. Yeah, that is not a wise move. Is that's going to bring the punt team on three and out from the Buckeyes now, Jeff? But we've managed to flip the field. We're no further really than we were before. 6:39 left to play in the first quarter, and Rowan Fluellen, who's Dropped one and just had another pick. Hit him right, yeah. right in the so hands. far, they have kept Townley out of this game. He hasn't run. In fact, he's run for negative yards, and he's only completed two short passes. So Buckeyes defensively so far in these first two series looking absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, we and just, hopefully they'll continue that all night. We just need to get the ball and go score right here. That's all there is to it. All right, here's a punt, and it's a big one. Going to be fielded. Number 17, Rowan Flewellen. Cuts out to the right side. He's under some heavy traffic. He gets out to the 32. And so the Buckeyes are going to start over uh, first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Let's see if they can get down the field this time and get a score. 627 left, 0-0 zero, zero your score after these defenses have come out. The Buckeye black flag stopping uh, these Cattle Mills Foxes on two consecutive drives. Uh, they ran six offensive plays in the first series, Jeff, and then punted three and out on that series. The Buckeyes pretty much drove the length of the field and then stalled deep in uh, Cattle Mills territory. They have great field position here from the Cattle Mills 34. Let's see if this Buckeye D uh, offense can get in rhythm. Here's the snap. They fake the handoff. Quarterback keeper on the right side, nothing there. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. He's dropped. By the way, we got a score on the Salina Graham game. Seven to nothing Graham so far. Graham takes the opening possession. Opening, opening kickoff, kickoff was returned. returned. So Graham, the winner of Graham and Salina gets the winner of this game here tonight. And uh, they are gonna say Brandon Tennyson picked up two. That gets it out to the 41 yard line, second and about seven for the Buckeyes. All right, here's the snap. Brandon drops back, poised under pressure. Pass complete for 14 yards across the middle, number 12, Mason Hurt. And if you give BT that much time, Jeff, he will absolutely surgically tear you apart. Right now, only a three-man rush from, from Cattle Mills. They're trying to cover those Buckeye receivers with the linebackers. And I'm sorry, it's just, you know, they're going to go five wide. And if they're going to dare Brandon Tennyson to say, look, we're going to drop eight and, and try to rush three, you may have a long night if you're Cattle yeah, Mills. And Brandon showed a lot of poise there in the pocket. Pitch, quick pitch to number 38, Haynes. Cuts up field, good for about five or six yards. Great run there by Haynes. And I, I tell you, that last play, uh, Tennyson showed a lot of poise, but a lot of faith in his left tackle because he had a man right right to his left about a foot and a half from him, and he didn't phase him. He didn't so uh, he's got a lot of, a lot of uh, faith in his offensive lineman. Now they're going back to this tight set. Everybody's stacked inside. It looks like 1988. Here's the snap. Dropping back, looking to pass, got time. Cuts to his right side, decides to keep it, picks up the first down and a whole bunch more all the way down to the 30 yard line. First down Buckeyes. My goodness, Brandon Tennyson, should I throw it, should I keep it, should I throw it, should I keep it? Last week, Jeff, he threw it incomplete. That week, This week he kept it, goes all the way down first and 10 to the 30 and shows his power as he runs through two tackles and gets first and 10 for the Buckeyes from the 30, knocking on the door of the red zone, Jeff. And you kind of get this feeling, here come the Buckeyes. They got a little rhythm offensively and they're kind of figuring some things out. Two receivers right, two left. Gonna have to dump it out to his safety valve. Haynes dodging tackles, picking up yards. Haynes running like a champion all the way out to the 25 yard line. 
Great read there by BT. He's looking downfield to number 12. Uh, that's Mason Hurt on the curl route. The linebacker sits on it. He flips it out to Haynes as it's out, uh, and uh, he makes five yards out of it. Hand off to Haynes once again, who makes a great step. Goes up in the middle. Look at him drive forward all the way inside the 20-yard line. He moves the chains. First down, Buckeyes in the red zone now. 436 and counting in the first quarter, and the Buckeyes got it rolling right now, Jeff. All right, a lot of rhythm. They look very crisp, very poised. No mistakes, no penalties yet. Hand off to Haynes around the right <laughs> side. What a block. What a block inside. Haynes to the five. My gracious. First and goal for the Buckeyes. Haynes is on fire. And I'm not sure. I think that was Luke Watson that just threw that block. And whoever the outside linebacker is is knocked back to sometime in mid-October right now. That was an absolute legal depleter. First and goal, Buckeyes. Here's the snap. Haynes, handoff up the middle. Touchdown, Touchdown Buckeyes. Buckeyes. Just like that, the Buckeye offense absolutely storming down the field, Jeff. To hit pay dirt, they are rushing from the outside of Blitzer. They just hand it to Haynes. What a first drive for the young sophomore. And it is now 6-0 with the extra point left to come. Choice jogs onto the field as that uh, inside blocker. And yeah, the Buckeyes are going to. Uh, yeah, you remember they used him for a two point exactly, conversion last week. Exactly. And then be, it, I be, think you'll see another one of those again tonight at some point. Yeah, Choice, the big power guy. Here's the snap. Kick is up, and it is good, folks. Gilmer strikes first. So uh, we're looking at 410 left to play in the first quarter. Gilmer goes up on top. Seven to nothing. We'll be right back after these messages. When tragedy strikes. You don't want to be in a position where you're second guessing your lawyer's ability or the resolve to get you fairly compensated. When you hire Godars and Young, you know you're hiring a law firm that has nationally ranked settlements and verdicts. We have over two decades of experience holding 18 other companies accountable for their negligent action. Don't make the mistake of hiring anybody else. Hire the best. Hire Godars and Young. All right, folks, we're back here in Commerce, Texas. Gilmer up on top of the Foxes. 4-10 left to play in the first, and it's 7 to nothing. Graham, by the way, early in the game, Todd, 14 to nothing against Solana. Didn't well, expect to say that tonight. Yeah, you didn't, and that, that's, that's a great matchup. I think Coach Metzl excited uh, or expected Solana to kind of come out pretty commandingly on that in that game. But Graham, of course, very, very well coached in that western region. And uh, for the Buckeyes tonight, uh, it's all about the focus. They've looked very sharp on both sides of the ball, Jeff. And uh, if they can continue to get another stop and get up 14 on the Foxes, let's see if they start pressing. Hernandez kicks down to the five. Buckeyes got a good opportunity here. Cuts out to the right side. And fumble, 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 fumble. Buckeyes, Buckeyes have the ball. What a shot. Who took that shot over there? Was that number? I think that was number 31 that laid the lick on them. Once again, that's the second time for him, Michael Colbert, and causes the fumble. I think he was the first guy there. Uh, Jeff, I, I think that was that was Landon Watson on number 22. Was that Landon Watson? Yeah, I, well, think I don't want to cheat Landon out of a good shot because, I mean, he laid the wood to him. Yeah, he put his head right on the football, and just like that, the Buckeyes at 25, I think, and, uh, and trust Eric's eyes. He's got new contacts well, well, over there. Well, Landon's 22, I think. Yeah. So, so Maybe uh, Landon recovered the fumble. We don't know. Big play for the Buckeyes, though, because they're on the 20-yard line. First and 10, handoff to Haynes. Cuts around the right side. Got room to run. Picks up two. Ashton Haynes on the carry. Ashton Haynes stretching that defense, Jeff, and forcing those linebackers to run right, run left, to run to the wide side of the field. And, Jeff, that is not accidental. You've got basically six guys that are going to play both ways, including the quarterback, number two, Townsend. Uh, and you force him from his safety side to run to the wide side. He covers the wide side of the field every time, uh, and that will take its toll as this game progresses. Okay, they're going to fake the handoff. Quarterback keeper, he tucks it, got room to run, and look at Brandon Tennyson. First down. It's going to be first and goal, ball on the seven. And so far, Jeff, if you want to talk about the battle of the quarterbacks, uh, the guy wearing the white jersey in number 11 is winning the battle right now. Oh, for sure. No it's question not, about it's it. It's not even close. BT, uh, first and goal now from the six-yard line, uh, and the Buckeyes looking to go to pay dirt again. All right, hand off to Haynes around the right side. He's got room. He's cutting up field, breaking tackles. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Touchdown, Buckeyes. He did it again. Just like that, the Buckeyes 
go up two scores, 13 to nothing. And after the turnover, the Buckeyes have it rolling here early. Now let's see, Jeff, if these Buckeyes with 3.36 left in the first quarter can keep their foot on the accelerator. Because right now, these Cattle Mills Foxes and that big crowd over on the side is in shock. Uh, as uh, these Buckeyes have come out and just completely dominated. Well, so far, Todd, this is the best I've seen the Buckeyes play this By year. Far. They are, By they far. are absolutely clicking on all cylinders. And against and a really want, good team. I, I'm telling you, they're, they're making it look easy. And the extra point is good. I want to point something out right quick, Todd, as we get prepared for the kickoff. Gilmer's third kickoff of the evening, I might point out. Uh, the... Uh, we, we don't have the rights to broadcast the video uh, tonight's game. We're, we're doing audio only. Hopefully everybody saw our message earlier in the week. We tried to put it out in social media land. But what some folks want to do, if they want to watch the broadcast and listen to those broadcasters, that'll be fine. Some people are going to try to sync up the video. I think we're about five minutes ahead of the game. But some people want to sync up uh, our audio to their video, which is fine if you can figure out how to do that. <laughs> good luck. Good, good, good luck with that. Yeah, otherwise, get, get, get your get your uh, protractor out and yeah. try to figure that one out. Yeah. Other, otherwise, uh, and and uh, they did that last week. Mike Ward told me he, he said I put your audio up and I synced it to their video, so we're apologizing for that. We want to make sure everybody knows Eric Connors was not the cameraman last week. You were watching. If you clicked on the wrong. Correct. Uh, link. Uh, link. There was an Athens link and a Gilmer link, and a lot of people clicked on the Athens link. So we just wanted everybody to know that Eric was not drinking. He was. <laughs> he's a good cameraman. <laughs> yeah, for that game. For that yeah, game. he drank after the game, after all the penalties. But uh, all right, here comes the kickoff for the Buckeyes. Lining up here, number 20, Hernandez puts another one. This one's high, going to be fielded on the 11. And uh, Buckeyes getting down their special teams. Making a stop around the 26-yard line. So, so far tonight, they haven't been uh, past the 35-yard uh, line. Yeah, and, and it's been a flip field. as They've only run nine offensive plays, Jeff, so far in this first quarter. They, they picked up one first down, picked up maybe you know 18 yards before the Buckeyes had them fourth and two, forced them to punt the first time. The second one was a clean three and out. They never picked up a yard. And now here comes Townsend with his back against the wall, down 14 to zero with 3.32 left. And this Buckeye defense is playing fantastic so far here, Jeff. All right, handoff up the middle to the back. Lots of traffic in there. He's gonna fight his way forward. Nice run. Looks like he's gonna pick up maybe uh, five yards on the carry. And that's not bad considering what he ran into. So it's gonna be second and uh, second and five. Yeah, let's, let's see if they actually keep the ball on the ground here, Jeff. As, uh, the Buckeyes are playing six defensive backs and basically saying, "Hey, uh, we got safeties deep, and we're we're gonna we're gonna dare you uh, to run the ball." All right, they pull up quick pass. It's only gonna be good for a, a couple of yards. They're gonna get out to the 35-yard line. It's gonna be about a yard short. So we're looking at third and one. Makes you wonder if they're gonna throw that little curl route to number 14 that well, they've been doing. Now they're saying they're moving well, they're the they saying chains. they got that's, the chain? Okay, they get, a, they're going to give him a generous yeah, spot. that's a terrible spot because he was at the 30-yard line. No, we say generous spot. Okay. Not terrible, generous. No, terribly generous. Terribly generous. I'll go for that one. <laughs> First and 10 from the 36-yard line. The Foxes driving on the Buckeyes. Two receivers left, one right. Fakes the handoff, pulls up. Long shot down the sideline. And it is a terribly thrown ball. They're going to give us a pass interference. They're calling pass interference against Jaden Griffin. The ball was uncatchable. It was thrown inside. Jaden put a hand up as he was running by him, and I hope they're not going to be that particular uh, tonight. He's not bumping him. He's just got a hand up, feeling in space where the receiver is. Well, that, that's the Sunnyvale game all over again, Jeff. Is, is The best play that Sunnyvale had last week was the pass interference calls. Uh, they just went to the man-to-man -man coverage. Of course, Jaden Griffiths is defending a guy that's seven inches taller than he is, but they're moving this one forward all the way to the Buckeye 49-yard line, and uh, that is the first penalty on the Buckeyes tonight. Uh, and uh, let's see if this defense can recover from that as uh, finally Cattle Mills gets into Buckeye territory for the first time all night with 2.28 left in the first quarter. Empty backfield now, Jeff. It's Tyler Townsend and five wide. Three to the left, two to the right. Townsend drops back, rolls to his right, fires one. Covered extremely well uh, by Cody Gidry there. It was a little out route, and they do pick up some good yardage there. It looks like about seven. It's going to bring up second and three. 
Yeah, and uh, Gidry is right there on the coverage, um, and uh, they just execute a great catch. That's a great pass by Townsend, but they pick up seven on first down. Now deep into Buckeye territory. Let's see if the Buckeyes, who have not yet blitzed, try to get some pressure and create a big negative play here against Cattle Mills. All right, Cattle Mills out across midfield for the first time in this game. Trying to get some momentum. Quarterback rolls to his left side. He's under heavy pressure. Running for his life, he throws it away. Yeah, number 44, Matthew Burton, is in his ear basically saying, you better throw that football, son, because if you eat oh, it. Oh, he, he's going to be wearing him out all night. I guarantee you'll be wearing number 44 before this game is over. You write it down. Matthew Burton's going to get his hands on Townley sometime tonight, and he will make his presence known. Well, watch the beef package. They're going to run the ball here, Jeff. Third down and three. They're thinking it's four down territory, so they're going to run the big back straight up the middle. All right, they pitch it to the uh, back, and he look at this. He breaks one. He's headed for the house. Nobody's going to catch him, are they? Yes. Caught at the five-yard line by Dylan Fluellen, and that was just a, a, a freak play where he just goes up into traffic and all of a sudden pops out. And that is the biggest play of the night for Salina as they're fighting their way back in. First and goal from the five. Yeah, it's Cattle Mills, Jeff, not Salina. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. No, no. I'm still thinking about no. Salina getting beat by Graham. <laughs> by Cattle Mills. I'm getting ahead of myself. First and goal for Cattle Mills now. Uh, is uh, That's just kind of a missed tackle up front. The Buckeyes had their hands on him. Uh, and now uh, Cattle Mills has got their first chance to, to draw first blood against yeah, the Buckeyes. Handoff, number 24. Bounces outside and drugged down. What a great job by Luke Watson to get his hand on him and drag him down for a loss. Yeah, that's, that's not a good idea. Is that becomes a second and goal now all the way back out to the eight-yard line. Cattle Mills going backwards on that one, Jeff. They have a great kicker right now, down 14 to nothing with a minute and 20 left. And remember, Gilmer won the toss and deferred to the second half. We're up three scores essentially right now. Uh, and this black flag defense with an opportunity to stand up and make a stop here. Let's see if we can pull it off. All right, they're going to go to the air. They're going to pass. Graham, he tucks it. He's sacked. And he's sacked by who? Is that Borda? Yeah, that's Borda. He comes in there and stays in his no. lane. And that's going to bring up now. That's Luke Watson that comes out of the game. Hobbling on that left I think angle. that was Jimerson that maybe got him. Was that? Bryson Jimerson, number 27. Yeah, 27. Well I think that might have been Jimerson that got a hold of him. It's hard to tell from our vantage point. And that brings up third and goal from the 11. So far, Cattle Mills going backwards on this drive, Jeff. Wouldn't this be an incredible stop considering they were first and goal from the five? They drop back wanting to pass. He's dropped, wants to pass, throws for the end zone, got a man open, touchdown, Cattle Mills. Yeah, and that's all you got to do is you give Townsend that much time, Jeff, and he will absolutely find the free man. 30 seconds left, and after that big break uh, and busted, uh, basically, fullback play on third down and two, that went for about, oh, let's call it 40 yards in the run. Uh, two great plays by the Buckeyes down to, uh, to get Townsend going backwards. But you see what happened there when Luke Watson came out? We lost contained. And when we lose contain on Townsend, he's got that much time. He's just going to float around back there until he finds somebody open. And uh, that is Cattle Mills drawing first blood. It takes him 11 minutes and 30 seconds and four possessions to do it. But uh, here's the extra point attempt. And we got a flag It was no good, first of all. They, they, I think they, I don't know if he's saying, I think that was no good, by the way. Let's see what so the let's call see what is the penalty here. is here. They threw that. That's really going to give them another opportunity. Yeah, here. that's false start against the offense. They're going to back up five yards, Jeff, and let's see if the Buckeyes can steal a point here, which would be huge. Buckeyes lead 14 to six here with 30 seconds left in the first quarter. After that last, uh, let's call it a 77-yard uh, drive. Yeah, and it's a Cattle shame. Mills. It's a shame they had a penalty because he missed that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see if uh, he gets this one. He's got that on his mind, the kicker, and uh, the Buckeyes thinking, hey, maybe we can steal one right here and get pressure up the middle. Just want to make sure we don't rough the kicker. We're coming hard, that's for sure. I think we got maybe an offsides penalty. He missed another one. This time I think it's going to be against Gilmer. I think that was an offsides penalty. And, yeah, we'll uh, go back five and do it again, Jeff. So yeah. we went five one way in a miss, five the other way in a miss, and that's two consecutive kicks. That he's that he's that the missed. kicker is missed. Yeah, it's a shame that that's a that's a shame because he's missed two. Yeah. That's a big deal too. I mean, in a game like this, one point can make all the difference in the world. And uh, 
So we are uh, back up to the. Uh, going to try it again. They're right back on the three, so they're going to try to kick it again. Yeah, they're going to come back here, and the side judge is going to say half the distance to the goal line, which is actually the right call. Exactly. They're going to back this up. Yeah, they uh, they move it back a yard, basically on the four yard line. That may make all the difference, Jeff. Let's see. The Buckeyes can get a big push here as this is the third attempt in a row. And yeah, I mean, point. surely he won't miss three. He's got another shot at it. Did he do it? Yeah, I don't he know. He was barely. sloppy. He's sloppy, but he did it. So Cattle Mills strikes against the Buckeyes after a, a busted play, basically, when a long run. And so it's now 14-7 with 30 seconds left to play in the first quarter. We'll be right back after these messages. Extra, extra. Read all about tonight's game in Thursday's Gilmer Mirror, complete with pictures, coaches' comments, and a look at next week's opponent. The Gilmer Mirror has been serving the citizens of Upshur County since 1877. You know, reading the news online is fine, but there is nothing like physically picking up your hometown paper, turning the pages, and catching up on everything going on in our area. If you're not subscribing to the Gilmer Mirror, you're probably missing out. It's one of my favorite publications, and I know you'll love it too. The Gilmer Mirror, www.gilmermirror.com. And with 30 seconds left in the first quarter, Cattle Mills scores to cut the Buckeye lead in half. 14-7 Buckeyes lead with 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Uh, you've got Haynes and uh, number two, Jaden Griffin, deep for the Buckeyes. And uh, special teams is something that Cattle Mills does a lot of. They've got talented kickers, Jeff, as we saw to the punting side. So uh, let's see what happens here. All right, big kick here. It's going to uh, be fielded on the 19-yard line. Heading up field, and they kicked it to uh, Haynes, and he gets a nice run back all the way to the 34-yard line. Here comes BT and the Buckeyes through the last two possessions. And Haynes Jeff. getting up a little slow. He's he uh, I think he got maybe got busted on the quad. So they're going to have to bring in a, a, another back into the game here. Yeah, and that's he's just limping off a little bit. I think he just got stunned. He'll yeah. walk that one off. Yeah, they're going to bring in Cody Gidry. Cody Gidry in for the and the, you know it's an embarrassment of riches back there. Uh, as uh, we got number three, Devion Smith is not in the game tonight, uh, but it doesn't really matter as the Buckeyes are very deep in that secondary. Quarterback keeper, they're going to roll to the right side. Brandon tucks his shoulder and moves upfield, gets all the way to about the 40-yard line. That's a big run there. That's about seven good yards. That'll bring up second and three. Yeah, when Brandon puts his shoulders down, he is so powerful in his lower body, he just pushes. Uh, and he gets about four yards after the first contact. That's going to be the last play, Jeff, of the first quarter. Buckeyes won the first stanza, 14-7 after winning the, uh, the toss and deferring. And uh, they got the ball here and able to drive. Let's see what happens in the second quarter. We'll be right back after these messages. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Well, Todd, uh, Buckeyes are back on the field. It's uh, flipped the, we flipped the side and uh, and it's uh, two wide outs to the right, one back in the backfield. They drop back, he's looking to pass, launches a bullet, a double coverage, almost caught. And man, what an attempt that was. Uh, that was number 12, Mason Hurt, goes up in the air, tries to high point it. Man, he had green shirts all over him. It was a perfectly thrown ball, just very difficult to catch with people when you're wearing green on your front and your back. Yeah, well, we took the shot, now it's third down and short. 
Probably four down territory, Jeff, because you don't take that shot if you're not willing to do it. Watch for number four right here to get no, this No, this is Tennyson right here. Nope, they're going to hand it to four. Up the middle, Cody drops his head, and he's going to be really close. I think they're going to give it to him. Move the chains. Move the chains. First down, Buckeyes. Is, uh, they were going to go for it there in short yardage situation anyway. As Cody puts his head down and picks up a first down, out to the Buckeye 44. Uh, as the Buckeye offense, uh, really these last two drives, Jeff, have just been able to kind of move at will. They took the shot downfield. They tested those safeties deep there with Mason Hurt. Uh, who still hadn't gone back in the game. I think he came down a little bit awkward on his shoulder. He's getting a drink, and I don't think uh, it'll be too long before he's back in. Maybe Top package the for the Buckeyes. Dropping back, sets up a perfect screen. Look at this. Cody Gidry down the sideline, gets the first down, plus another 10. Great screen, man. They set that up. Beautiful. That was the most beautiful screen I've seen all year. Yeah, got the kick out block. Cody Gidry waits for the block, gets up behind it. 21-yard gain to the 35-yard line, and the Buckeyes have it rolling. First and 10 from the Fox 35-yard line. Buckeyes driving down the field in this second quarter and looking sharp. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the left, one back in the backfield. It's Gidry. Tennyson from the shotgun. Here's the snap. Drops back, looking to pass, looking deep. Forced out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it. Look and out. Comes Look back out. across the field, dodges a couple of tackles, gets out to the 30-yard line, and that's going to be a gain of five. Yeah, and right now it's number 11 that's showing who's got the best feet from a quarterback standpoint on the field. As, uh, and that's great coverage with three safeties back deep. Hey, BT just reads it, takes the five yards with his feet, trusts his feet, second down and five, we'll take it all day long. I'm telling you, the Sunday. Buckeyes look so sharp tonight. It is just amazing. Quarterback draw, big hole up the middle. Brandon trips over the turf monster down to the 15-yard line, first and 10 from the 15. Yeah, and that, that's just great calls from up here next door in, in the offensive uh, booth, Jeff. Is Look at that offensive line opening holes yeah. up. Three down linemen, five blocking three. I can do that math. <laughs> we're, we're getting our blocks, and if you've got Brandon Tennyson with the, with eight, nine, ten yards to run before anybody touches him, hey, we're going to take hey, that. Hey, buddy, I'm, I'm proud that. of this offensive line's effort tonight. They are really doing a good job. A big factor in this game right now, I'll tell you. Tennyson's by himself in the backfield, pulls up, looking to pass. Doesn't have anybody open. Fires one to 14. Dylan Thrill and breaks tackles. Down to the six, to the five, to the four. What a great effort by Dylan. And that's why he's a Division I football player. First and goal for the Buckeyes on the four. Big freight train, Jaron <laughs> Choice, number 24, coming into the game. Gee, and I game. wonder what they're going to do. I wonder what's coming right here, Jeff. Get that train Here's horn ready. Hand off to Jaron. He's going to be in trouble. Drop for a loss. Didn't get up inside, tried to bounce that to the outside. Well, we had a little fumble yeah, uh, on the handoff. The timing was thrown off. We had a little fumble there on the, on the handoff. We lost about six on the play, so it's going to be second and goal from the 10. Watch the wide side of the field as uh, you see big number 27. Bryson Jimerson comes in at the F-back, and Jaron Choice in at the, the running back. Let's see if this isn't just a run play by BT. Handoff to Choice up the middle, and he's tackled from behind. Just kicked his legs out from under him. He's good for about uh, two. That's going to bring up third and goal <laughs> from the eight. Yeah, may, down, may be four down territory right here, Jeff, but uh, I would expect with a 14 to seven lead that uh, we're going to take our shots in the end zone right here and then probably try to kick a field goal uh, with uh, 8.56 left to play in the third quarter. Watch, find number 14. Yeah, I say roll Tennyson out to his right side. Here it is, they're gonna pass to the corner. That's gotta be pass interference. You gotta be kidding me. No pass interference call. They go for Dylan uh, Flewellen in the corner of the end zone. I could, I would have said pass interference, but the ref said no. Crowd not happy about that one. But uh, nonetheless, that's gonna bring up fourth down. And that's a great defensive stand by the Foxes. It's gonna force Gilmer to go for the uh, field goal. So number 20, Hernandez comes in. He's been deadly accurate. Remember, he's the guy that won the game, the district championship with the last second kick, and he is right through the middle of the uprights. Gilmer gets three out of that one. Takes and, a 10-point uh, lead, Jeff, 17 to seven, 841, and really Cattle Mills dodging the bullet on that one is uh, they've got first and goal uh, inside the seven yard line, and uh, we just get out of that with a field goal. We'll be right back after these messages. 
Because of investments in our surrounding infrastructure, eTax offers advanced improvements in internet connections, service experience, and quality of life for our customers. The driving force for eTax has been to create a state of the art company using both the latest technology and local expert technicians, people you know. And best of all, a certified support team that delivers quality support within hours, not days. eTax, local support from the team you trust. 26 yard field goal attempt is good by Hernandez to bring this to a 17 to seven contest. Buckeyes lead with 841 left in the first half. And Jeff, uh, don't forget, we have uh, uh, a deferred one toss, which is gonna get us the ball to start the second half. And right now the Buckeyes kind of have cattle mills on the ropes. Right now you gotta figure out a way to get a stop and go up, you could go up 17 points you know, going into the late first half here. Uh, and uh, the Buckeyes just got to keep their foot on the accelerator. Yeah, Todd, I'll tell you what, I'm just incredibly impressed with what I've seen so far. This Cato Mills team's no slouch. They're very athletic, very well coached. The Buckeyes are just playing out of their mind tonight. This is exactly what you want in the fourth round of the playoffs. I'm telling you what, the way they're playing tonight, I wish the Carthage was on the other side of the ball. I'm not kidding because uh, I think they'd be putting it on them. They are absolutely playing hungry. There is, there's, they're not pacing themselves in any shape, form, or fashion. They are here to knock somebody's head off. And here's the kickoff. Big one. Puts his foot behind it. It's going to be fielded on the six. Returns all the way across the right side. Finds a little hole. Stays on his feet. And it looks like that was uh, number 25 on the tackle that time. I think he was one of the... Guys that got him the last time, that was uh, Chase Waller on the tackle. And that's inside the 30, Jeff. So uh, here again, the black flag, big Matthew Burton out there. And uh, we've got some substitutes in for the Buckeyes now uh, so that we can keep our foot on the accelerator. But a three and out here would be just what the doctor ordered deep in Cattle Mills territory. Let's see if they try to run the ball right here, Jeff. All right, here's the snap. They pull up a little short pass. They run a little button hook, a little short one. They're, they're not going deep very often tonight. No, we are uh, keeping everything in front of us with that three deep safety look. And that's that's kind of part of the plan is to say, hey, let's make them execute. Let's keep the ball in front of us uh, and not give up anything deep is, uh, is that zone with the safeties to the wide side uh, and keeping at least six guys in the box to stop the run. This is, this is a containment strategy. Two receivers left, one right, two right, actually. Quarterback drops back, he wants to run, throws, a dangerous pass, good coverage there by Dylan uh, Flew Ellen, who's covering the big number 12, their leading receiver. We want to give a shout out tonight, by the way, to our good buddy Parker Dodd, Joe Dodd's sons listening in Provo, Utah. Big track star out there in Provo, Utah. I'm yeah, really proud of Parker, former Buckeye. And and it's cold up there. So yeah. level up, Parker. Yeah, he's colder than we are for sure. All right, we're looking at third and four. One receiver wide to the left, two to the right, one back in the backfield. They're going to try to hand this one off and pick up four. They're it's calling, it, calling an audible. Let's see if they stick with the run. I think they're going to line up and go to the run. They hand it off up the middle. And uh, he's going to be close, but I don't think well, he got there. He's going to be no. about a yard short. That's fourth down, and uh, the Foxes got a decision. 8-14 left down 10, and uh, they are sending two new receivers in, Jeff, and they're going to go for this right here. So, Cato Mills, it is fourth down and two. Look and, for and I can't two. believe they're doing it. They're on their own 35-yard line. Unbelievable. Maybe he's going to do a quick kick or something because uh, – I wouldn't go for fourth and two on the 35 with the Buckeyes on the other side of me tonight for any any reason whatsoever. They keep calling. This is the second audible. They're going to run out of clock, and Buckeyes are shifting. Quarterback keeper up the middle, and he is tripped up. They got him. I think they got him. Who was that? Number 17, Rowan Flewellen comes up and makes the stop. Let's see what kind <laughs> it'll of be, spot It'll be depending given. on the spot. I think he's short. That's Buckeyes football, Jeff. That that's is, the spot. Come that's on, you the gotta, spot. That's going to be the Buckeyes football. You got to give that one to the Buckeyes. Rowan Fluellen does a great job coming up, making the stop on Townley. Yeah, he did not get that. They're going to measure it. They'll They're measure it, but he did not get that. Hey, let me tell you something else. I'm impressed with tonight. I'm impressed with a lot of things tonight, Todd. You should know. 
the, and one of them is the Buckeye crowd tonight. They are on their feet. Yeah, they the brought noisemaker. Man, we have got a full crowd out here. Well, just listen, listen to what you hear in about, oh, T minus 20 seconds, because they're going to be probably about three inches short from what I can tell here uh, as uh, they need it all the way out to the to the 38-yard line, and that is short. That is short. It's short. That is Buckeyes football. They're going to put it down, try it, but it looks short to me. Buckeyes football. Unbelievable. There's the what a noise. stop. Rowan Flynn comes up and makes the stop. And, boy, he was the hero of that series for sure. Well, Jeff, now you're up 17 to 7, 735 left, and they have handed you a gift. And let's see if this Buckeye offense that has really kind of been unstoppable, uh, Haynes is back in at running back. Uh, and it's first and 10 now inside the 40 yard line. They are two inches short of the 38. And if this Buckeye offense can go draw pay dirt here, especially quickly, uh, this, this game is, is uh, back in Cattle Mills into a corner here late in the first half for sure. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Hand off to Haynes up the middle. Haynes is gonna be good for a, about two. Kurt Trailer just sent me a message that said, "What's a button hook route, Kurt? That's a new thing we've been working on. Maybe you should, maybe you should try. Hey, I'll Mr. come down. Mr. I'll come down there and, and help you out, Mister Mister Tight Ends Coach. Yeah. Look, if we don't know what the route's called, we make them up. We're creative here. And Kurt Trailer knows that. And Kurt Trailer should know better than to even ask that question. Hey, Kurt, we're protecting your playbook, brother. That was just a, listen. That was a three-yard gain, not a two-yard gain from Haynes. Two receivers left, one right. Takes the handoff, rolls to his right side. Got a block. Woo! Puts a move. I mean, that was a move. What, what a move gracious. by Brandon Tennyson around the right side and got a good block from his wide out, Mason Hurd out there. That's going to be third down and about a yard. Maybe and, a well, foot. A foot. And, uh, yeah, I can't believe Kurt's never heard of the old button hook. The old button hook route. The old button hook route. Hey, Kurt, uh, we pulled the fourth grade playbook out on that one and just called it like we saw it, bud. All right, tight formation. Handoff, 38 Haynes. He's under pressure, but he's going to get it. And a lot more. He breaks to the right side, and this young man is running like a racehorse tonight all the way down to the 16-yard line. Easy first down for the sophomore. And what a great run. Haynes is having the game of his life. Uh, yeah, and he, 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 he didn't have a game this good in his, when he was on JV. Yeah, Jeff, and he gets better and better and better and better. Every single carry, he's getting better. He ran out of his shoe right there and trying to get that he back on. He does that frequently, by the way. That's Running his signature. That's one of his trademarks. He runs out of his shoes a lot. That means that means you put 100% effort in, Todd. That's, That's what right. that means. All right, Haynes in the backfield. They're going to fake the handoff. He keeps it. He's going upfield to the five. What a run. We've got a flag from the backside, Jeff, way behind the play. More than likely going to be a hold against Gilmer. Oh, my gracious. Here comes the here comes the penalty bugs again because uh, Brandon Tennyson breaks that one all the way down to the three-yard line. And the white hat official here uh, calls the hold uh, basically as the tackle was being made. Yeah, they're going to call a 10-yarder against Gilmer. That's going to unfortunately back us up. It'll be repeat first down. And this will be first and 20 instead of where we wanted to be at the five. And 20 for the Buckeyes. So uh, Buckeyes get backed up on that one. 5.53 left to play in the second quarter. Gilmer leads 17 to seven. Need to score here and uh, start putting nails in the coffin, uh, so to speak. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Drops back, looking to pass, throws a long one, headed for the end zone, and it is deflected. Great defensive play by the Fox there uh, in the end zone. He he is like 5'8", and he went up with Dylan Fluellen and bats that one down. That's just a great defensive effort. Yeah, he can't throw that one any better, and Dylan uh, tries to high point that, but as you say, Jeff, that's Tyler Townsend. That's the kind of athlete that he is. He shows you his hops, gets up there and manages to get a finger on that ball, and brings up second down and 20 now for the Buckeyes. All right, Tennyson drops back. It's a draw play. He cuts up the middle. He's going to be drugged down a little short. He gets about maybe five on the carry, and that is going to put the Buckeyes in an unfortunate situation. And that's what penalties will do for you. Instead of being first and goal on the five, easy score, we're looking at third and 15. Yeah, the Buckeyes need to get all the way down to the seven-yard line for a first down. Leading 17 to seven right now, Jeff. It's a 10-point game. you got to try to make this a three-score lead with five minutes left in the halftime. 
Uh, this may be four down territory. The Buckeyes just have to pick up about nine or ten on this play. All right, Tennyson drops back, looking to pass, fires a bullet, and it's just nearly picked off. And that's going to bring up fourth down. So I think they're a little bit far to to uh, to kick here. Yeah, that's so they're going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, no no man's land right here. Uh, is that's Brandon Tennyson, and and he had a man open. But the linebacker just reading his eyes got out there and got into that passing lane. And this is the second possession in a row, Jeff, that the Buckeyes have gotten down to the scoring position. I think we may call a timeout here and talk about it. And yeah, we will that's right. And break. listen, Todd, here's, here's something interesting. It's 17-7 to here in Commerce Stadium, and Graham is beating Salina 17-7 to at the half. <laughs> we'll so, keep you updated on those other two game scores with Carthage and with China Spring and Wimberley and Navarra uh, as we uh, – Tick now through the night. We'll take a quick time out here and be right back. Growing up as a child in East Texas, I was always taught that I had to outwork my opponent. That same principle has carried over into our law firm. And for over 20 years, we've outworked each and every insurance company, lawyer, or corporation we've gone against. If you look at our results, they prove it. Put us to work for you, and we promise to never stray from the same East Texas work ethic that you were raised on. Critical play here, fourth down and 15. The Buckeyes need to get down to the seven yard line for a first down. Plenty in the playbook, five wide here, Jeff, as we've got five minutes. Now check out Rowan Farrell, and he's at wide out, not inside receiver. And they're gonna call a timeout. Cato Mills is gonna call a timeout. So I'm not sure what we're doing. We got uh, Rowan Farrell and wide out here, all the way, you know, four yards from the sideline. So we don't usually see that. We used to seeing Rowan on the inside. Yeah, so, so upstairs, uh, with only four minutes and 56 seconds left, Cattle Mills says, hey, this is the play of the game. If we can get a stop right here, we've dodged a bullet. And for the Buckeyes, this will be two trips inside the red zone, Jeff, and two trips inside the red zone to only come away with three points. That's a victory for Cattle Mills. So right now, you probably so – well, how many times we say this? So far, play of the game. Fourth down and 15. Let's see what Coach Allen Metzl and Coach Lipsy here have in the bag of tricks fourth down and 15 obviously Salina is going to play that three deep safety look and not let anything get behind them uh, and uh, for the Buckeyes you, you got to basically go for the end zone because you, you got to get to the seven for a first down anyway uh, we'll probably see an empty set right here uh, all right same setup we got three receivers wide to the left Rowan Fluell and his D wide out against the sideline two receivers to the right quarterbacks in the backfield by himself this is going to be interesting. Inside screen. Here's right here, the snap. Jim. Drops back. Forced out of the pocket to the right. Looking to pass. Going to have to tuck it. He's going to get tackled. They're going to get the ball back. Big stop for Cattle Mills there, Jeff. As after they turn the ball over, uh, we we turn the ball over on downs and uh, still a 10-point lead with 445. But again, that penalty, Jeff, that huge penalty. Uh, that backed the Buckeyes up into first down and 20 after Brandon Tennyson had taken it all the way down to the five yard line, uh, creates a stop and uh, kind of the Buckeyes for the first time stopping Lost themselves the on offense. Excuse now it's time for the defense to come back and get the ball right back. Three and out, the Buckeyes still have two timeouts remaining to stop the clock, but uh, we got we cannot let Cato Mills crawl back in this game here and score uh, late here in this first half. We, we, we got to try to get the ball back and score ourselves. All right, quarterback keeper right up the middle. He nearly breaks one. Thank goodness for uh, Choice out there that gets him from behind and uh, limits his uh, momentum. Best run of the night there by uh, the quarterback. Yeah, Townley, Townley, he gets about seven yards on the carry. And Buckeye defense just playing tough tonight. They got to contain Townley. That's the name of the game. We said it from the top of the show. And uh, Handoff up the middle. And he is in trouble, gets back to the line of scrimmage maybe a little bit. He's not going to get what he needed. He's going to be, they're going to give him a yard. He's going to be short. It's third and about one and a half. And the Buckeyes need a negative play here, but look for them to keep it on the ground and keep it in the tackle box with Townley doing something with his feet right here, Jeff. Yeah, and you see the Buckeyes, they've got that beef package. We got four down linemen right now. And we got two over the center. They know that he wants to run a draw up there. They're going to take it away from him. He scrambles to his left side, picks up the first down, and a whole lot more as he breaks one up the middle. 
Now to the left side. He's headed to the house. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to be out of bounds at the seven. What a run by Townley. And that's what we've been talking about. He can bust one any time, and they're on the big run. Uh, and they are first and goal from about the seven. And that's Kiki Johnson, Jeff, that's on the outside out there that does not force Townley to pitch the ball. And he doesn't want to pitch the ball. That's a great job by Jaden Griffin there to just take the angle and get down the field and stop him. Bryson Jimerson coming back onto the field here as Kiki comes out. Uh, and uh, you just can't let him loose like that because he will hurt you with his feet as he just did. And then uh, I tell you what, huge series of downs here as they've managed to flip the field and have a chance to score here. Uh, they're going to pitch it to that uh, number eight that got the, broke the big run earlier. He's going to be good for about a yard maybe, depending on the forward momentum. Oh, they're going to give him down to the three yard. They said his forward progress got to the three. And so that's going to be gain of uh, about three. 3.15 left, Jeff, now. And the Buckeyes will get a chance to get the ball back. But a 10-point lead. Now you need a big turnover, a big stop right here. They're going to go power football. They're going to run this same play exactly to the right-hand side with an unbalanced line here and go under center. Uh, they're going to keep it on the ground. Yeah, if you ever needed a uh, fumble, now would be a good time. And they're going to get the score. Hand it to the up-back fullback. And Cato Mills dodges the bullet on one end and flips the field on the Buckeyes on the other. And you see that penalty, Jeff, that's down deep in Buckeye territory. Right now, that's a 14-point penalty, or 13 points, because the Buckeyes missed an opportunity for a touchdown and then give one up on the other side as uh, the extra point is left to come. Yeah, the good isn't it news, amazing how, how that shifts? A one holding like penalty, that. instead of being on the five, first and goal at the five, it, it cost us a turnover on downs, which, which resulted in a score for yes. Cato Mills. So, uh, again, penalties and uh, just gonna gonna kill you. 13-point swing turns into a 14-point swing. The good news, Jeff, is with 2.54 left and 17-14, to 14, the Buckeyes are gonna get a chance to get the ball back with plenty of time and two timeouts to go score themselves and stretch this back to a 10-point lead going in at the half. Obviously, receiving the kickoff, Jeff, that'll be huge. Right now, it's about the Buckeyes being able to answer. They let Cattle Mills off the hook right there with their own penalty flag. Let's take a quick timeout and be right back with this kickoff. For 120 years, First National Bank of East Texas has been earning the trust of our customers and our East Texas communities through ever-changing times with the commitment, dedication, and financial strength of our network of branches across East Texas, fulfilling dreams big and small and earning your trust every day. Let our friendly expert staff serve you and your family's financial needs. First National Bank of East Texas, together we're better. Watch the onside though. So we're looking at 17-14 as Gilmer gives up seven to Cato Mills late in the second quarter. 2.54 left to play before the half. And here is a high pooch kick. It's gonna be fielded by number 12, Mason Hurt. Mason's not gonna get much on that one. He gets to the 29. So Gilmer's got 71 yards to pay dirt and they've got two minutes and 49 seconds to do it. Certainly plenty enough time to get it done. Yeah, 249, two timeouts, and right now it's all about execution and not, uh, you know, not pushing yourself backwards with these penalties. Jeff, the Buckeyes have been able to handle physically Cattle Mills all night long, uh, but that last series of downs with the fourth down stoppage turning into a touchdown was a 14-point swing for Cattle Mills, and uh, the Buckeyes got to figure out a way to get this back. All right, Brandon rolls to his left side. He's got heavy pressure coming. He passes, and that's gonna, he's just going to throw it out of bounds. Pass intended for number two, Jaden Griffin. Incomplete, incomplete stops the clock. Looks for us to go back to Haynes because the Buckeyes have got to get something, something established here and move the chains. We don't want to be down in third and long with two incomplete passes and give Cattle Mills the opportunity to get the ball back. We got a 17 to 14 lead right now, Jeff, really. And don't forget, we get the ball to start the second half. Uh, it's a critical time in the game right now. The Buckeyes got to go down and score and then start the second half with the score, and that, that's, that's a huge mountain to climb. All right, short pass complete to Haynes. Out on the right side, he gets out of bounds, stops the clock. Gets probably about six yards on that play. That's gonna bring up third the down. clock is still running. They're saying that he didn't get out of bounds, Texas evidently. To for they tackled yards. him out of bounds. By Hayden Reef and Jason Thomason. So the clock continues down. to run, 220. 
Buckeyes lining up three receivers to the left, two to the right, empty backfield. Tennyson by himself, here's the snap. Drops back, got time, rolls to his right. What a catch. What a midfield to the 50. What a throw. Number 12, Mason, Mason Hurst. Hurt bells, snagged one out of the air. Bells us out. What a throw. Brandon Tennyson throws him back shoulder. That is a quarterback to quarterback. Eye contact. Yeah, that, that is clinical that was right a there. Bullet. That, that was an absolute something. bullet. That ball never got four feet off the ground. Two receivers left, two right, one back in the backfield. Dropping back. Launches one across the middle. Almost picked off. And almost caught on the deflection by number two, Griffin. Jay Griffin. Yeah, and then BT, that's the first basically bad pass that he's thrown. And uh, it's just because number nine is reading that route. Uh, and uh, BT didn't throw it over him. He tried to throw it through him and uh, was very fortunate there with 148 left to play in the half that we've still got second and 10 from Cattle Mills 49 yard line. Nobody hurt there, Jeff, for sure. But boy, that one was, that one was very fortunate for Gilman. All right, haven't seen Rowan Flewellen with a big catch tonight yet. Let's see if we can get the ball in his hands and let him do what he does. Here's the snap, drops back, quarterback draw, up the middle, nothing there. Maybe a couple of yards, he gets out to the 45 of Cato Mills, and they're gonna take a timeout. So we'll take a timeout here, Jeff, with a minute and 39 left in the half. 17-14, Buckeyes are gonna have third and seven Probably four down territory now, Jeff. Let's just talk about the situation. Gilmer actually has dominated this game except for a series of about five different plays. They stop us. We, we've got basically an apparent first and goal from the five. A holding penalty backs us up the first and 20. Uh, we're unable to convert. They stop us in four down territory. They take a, a, a basically a pitch play. Townley busts one down the, down the, the sideline. Uh, and they turn that into points. So instead of a 24 to seven game right now, we got a 17 to 14 game. Minute 39 left in the first half. Now, if the Buckeyes can go down and score and stretch this to a back to a 10 point lead and we get the ball to start the second half, we're in control of this game. Right now, it's just about execution. The Buckeye offense is executed brilliantly uh, all night long. Look for this to be third down territory. Watch them also potentially run the ball here and it's Ward in number 32 now for the Buckeyes, Jeff, running back. Two receivers right, two left, one back in the backfield. Tennyson drops back, looking to pass. Throws one, Rowan Florellen, complete. Spins out of two tackles, headed for the end zone. Tackled on the 10, and that's exactly what there we called for. Right Rowan finally got his shot and did what he does, got downfield. They rode him another 10 yards after they got on his back. What a spin move by Rowan Florellen, and I tell you what, I can tell you this, Jeff. I, I'm going to petition the UIL to say that we got to have two Flewellens on the team from now on because it is such a luxury to have those two talented young men. Uh, they're, they're stunting. Quick pass complete to Jaden. Gets a good block. Inside touchdown, the five. Buckeyes. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Number 14, Flewellen. Dylan Flewellen picks up with a perfect block, block and Jaden sneaks around him. Gets the score with 106 left to play in the in the half, and Todd, that's exactly what the Buckeyes had to do going into the half. What a throw. Brandon Tennyson hangs in, gets blasted on a on a, on a blitz that came off the corner. He stands in and throws that straight over to Jaden. Massive block there by number 14, Dylan. And I mean, it, it is a massive block. And All right, here's the kick. The extra point good. is good. We'll be right back for the conclusion of the first half. It's Gilmer 24, Cattle Mills Foxes 14. Winningham Chevrolet is proud to support the Gilmer Buckeyes. Don't miss out on the 15% savings on the 2020 Blazer, Equinox, and Trax. And remember, our service department is now open Saturday, 8 to 12. Stop by and see Jay, Roger, and Lindsay at Winningham Chevrolet. Back here at Texas A&M Commerce, where your Gilmore Buckeyes, the visiting team, lead 24 to 14 with a minute and six left. Now we'll look at the region. Wimberley up early on the Geronimo Navarro group, 14 to zero. It's easy for you to say. Yeah, Carthage up 17 to zero on China Springs. So much for the hope on that. And uh, 17 to seven, still the score. Graham over Solana. 
and here the Buckeyes lead 24-14, kicking off with a minute six left. And Jeff, the Buckeyes really need to figure out a way to keep uh, the Foxes on this end of the field for the next minute and six seconds. One timeout left. I don't think we're looking to score. I think we're just simply looking to stop them and take a 10-point lead in at the half. All right. The big leg, number 20, Hernandez. In for the kick. He's going to put this one nice and deep, I'm sure. That ball's going to hit and bounce. And he feels He's it. He's going to pick it up. He's coming back down the sideline. Got a nice little return going. And he is forced out of bounds there. By Braden Rash and uh, looked like, who was it, 19 maybe? Was that... Uh, I couldn't tell who that Keaton was. Davis, 31 yards on the return. Parker Gillo the and Braden Rash pulling him out of bounds. First and 10, Foxes. Great field position to start, Jeff. 56 seconds left is a great kick. Went down into the coffin corner. Looked like the guy fielded it and stepped out of bounds, but uh, they didn't call anything, and he returned it for another 40 yards, uh, or another 35 yards, out to the 38, first and 10 for the Foxes. All right, heavy pressure, throws one downfield, and he decides to throw it to the track. And uh, 50 seconds on the clock, that's gonna stop the clock, second and 10. Now that's dangerous, Jeff, and when I say dangerous, I mean dangerous for Cattle Mills. We have one time out left. You throw another incomplete pass, we're getting the ball back. <laughs> and that's not something that you wanna do. I'm not sure that Cattle Mills doesn't hear all of a sudden decide that, you know what, we'll take our 10 point deficit. Yeah, and, and hand the ball time. off and keep it on yeah, the ground. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That is interesting. It's only second down, but you got 50 seconds. So you could very easily, with a couple of incomplete passes, they're gonna throw it. Heavy pressure to the right side. He's gonna throw it across midfield. And intercepted. And that is intercepted. Boy, I mean, number four, Cody Gidry put the wood on that intended receiver, and that ball bounced around number in the Buckeye hands. Rowan Flewellen comes up with that pass. First and 10 Buckeyes. Caddo Mills not happy about it. Their fans think that was uh, a hit before the ball was there. That was clean. Yeah. Number four, Cody Gidry just cleaned his clock. And I mean, put the wood to him, and there's number 17, Rowan Flewillen, and the Buckeyes have got the ball at midfield. First one, and 10 from their own 48. One timeout, 42 seconds. Jeff, this isn't undoable at no, all. No, not undoable, for I sure. mean, look out here, five wide, and uh, one timeout. Got to be very smart, but if the Buckeyes can execute here, they can pick that last play back all up. All right, here's the pass. They're going to do a go round. He's open. He goes up and gets it to the 20 yard line. They're going to move the chains and stop the clock. Dylan and if you need a big play from Dylan Flewellen, there it is. There it is, right there. He goes up and high points the ball in double coverage. And they're going to spike the ball to stop the clock. 31 seconds left at the 20 yard line with one timeout. Jeff. Wow, man. All kinds of What time a turn here. of events we have here. Buckeyes are going to take their time, they're going to call this play. Second down to 10 Cattle Mills. And do not be shocked, Jeff, if the Buckeyes get this back and blow this game open right here. 24-14, 10 point lead. First and 10 Buckeyes inside the red zone. All right, here's Tennyson. Pump fakes. Rolls to his left side. Gonna keep it. Runs out of bounds. Nice play by uh, BT Kurt, there. Kurt uh, Trailer just sent me a message. He said the Graham, he sent me a picture of his screen. The Graham running back is a total stud, he says. So that explains why Graham's out there doing what they're doing right now. Yeah, two Salina, no doubt. Great coaching staff there yeah. in Salina. Let's see what the halftime is. Carthage, 17 to zero over Wim Wim Wimberley. And uh, both in the second corner. Third and 10 Buckeyes, 26 seconds left. Plenty of time here to pick up a first down. One time out. Got to get into field goal range, if nothing else, Jeff, right here. Wide side of the field, three receivers. Let's see what BT and the Buckeyes do out of an empty set. All right, he drops back, looking to pass. He's under heavy pressure. And they, they're going to sack him. We're going to have to call a timeout. And it's going to be a fourth down. And so Buckeyes are going to have to kind of go for it. It's 20 seconds on the clock. This has got to be Dylan Flewellen in the corner of the end zone. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Either that or or suck them. They're going to suck double coverage to the end zone. Let little brother run a little short post route over the, the middle. Under the middle. Yeah. Well, we and either one of those I'll take. Fourth down and 12. Not unmanageable by any stretch of the imagination, but obviously 
uh, you know, you, you got to try to pick up a first down, but no timeouts left, Jeff. So with 20 seconds, if we can pick up the first down, if it's a run and we get tackled, we got to get to the line of scrimmage, spike the ball, and then probably have time for one, maybe two shots in the end zone, uh, or maybe one shot in the end zone through the air and then kick the, kick the field goal. Yeah. For sure. The coaches are next door deliberating right about a foot from us through the glass. And uh, I wonder if we should make some suggestions. Do you think they'd appreciate that? I don't think it would I make a hill of beans worth of difference. Hey, I think they would. Hey, Coach Trailer, are you throw, listening? Throw us out of here. Button Kurt, hook. Kurt, Kurt would have. Uh, yeah, that's. we need a button <laughs> hook right here. We need the, we're going to name rename that. That's the Kurt Trailer the button Kurt hook. The Kurt Trailer. The KB button hook. The KT button hook. So this ought to be interesting. We got Watch 20 seconds this, on the Jeff. clock. Look Watch at this. this. They're stacking everybody to the left side, kind of like they do the, on the uh, – I don't think they'll stay there. No, we'll shift. They're going to shift, but they, they lined up as though they're going to go for two. Plenty of time on the clock. Plenty of time right, on Haynes the clock. Haynes is in the backfield. I think he's there just to block. Let's see what they're going to do here. BT tucks it, and he's going to get tackled at the 21. That was a big play there by number 14 for the Foxes. Because that's going to be turnover on downs with 14 seconds left on the clock. That's twice, And don't think Jeff. they're not going to come out slinging. Yeah, that's twice, Jeff, that the Buckeyes have had the opportunity to get points and gotten themselves into no man's land, really, where you can't kick a field goal and you got third and fourth and long. And uh, that's the second time that we got a turnover on downs. We're going to have deep safeties here. You got to tackle number two, Jeff. 14 seconds left. 24-14 right now the Buckeyes have to be sure as I think they're going to go back and just basically take yeah, a knee Yeah, uh, they're going into victory formation. They're just going to take a knee. That's going to be the end of the first half, folks. Gilmer leads 24-14. to We're going to uh, take a break, obviously, and uh, i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to actually have to keep rolling because we're going to film the band. Uh, so you'll be able to hear the band because you guys are listening to audio only on us, but the replay on Etex tomorrow and on Wednesday, we want you to be able to watch the band. So we're going to film the Gilmer band. And so if you want to listen to the band, you'll be able to pick it up on the mic. We'll be back after halftime. The Med Shop Pharmacy in Gilmer's features a drive through pharmacy for all your prescription and over-the-counter drug needs. Place refills using our free phone app, Rx2Go, or use our convenient auto refill line 24-7 at 903-680-2626. Stop by and see our unique gift items for all occasions or visit us on the web at gilmermedshop.com. And don't forget the Med Shop is your flu shot and vaccine headquarters for the fall and winter season. The Med Shop Pharmacy, your friendly hometown pharmacy.
Get on your feet and cheer as the stars kick to the Gilmer Fight Song. shot.
and majorette. The Buckeye Band marches the tra traditional American military style under the field command of Drum Major Jalen Wilkerson and fe feature twirler Hannah Threadgill. The band steps off to Invictus March by K.L. King and Queen City March by Bourne.
Please join Jeff Rash and Alan Metzel each Monday morning for the Gilmer Buckeyes Coaches Show. Every week, Jeff and Alan discuss elements of the program, speak with special guests, give player updates, review key plays from the prior week, and give insights on the opponent for the current week. As a fan, this is your chance to go into the locker room and behind the scenes. To view the Coaches Show, go to GilmerBuckeyes.com and click on the Coaches Show button. Go Buckeyes! Don't miss the 4A UIL Football State Championships this December. For more information, visit UILTexas.org. Two-time Hall of Fame inductees, Brent Godarzy and Marty Young. Back-to-back -back number one trucking firm in the nation. Back-to-back -back best attorney and best law firm in East Texas. Crowley Funeral Home has been serving families in Gilmer since 1883. Funeral director and Gilmer High School graduate Troy Murray leads the professional staff at Crowley Funeral Home and is committed to providing dignified, respectful, and compassionate assistance to every family in their time of need. Crowley Funeral Home feels strongly about maintaining high standards of excellent service while still keeping prices affordable. At Crowley Funeral Home, we treat your family as our own. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Gilmer National Bank is your hometown community bank, serving people in East Texas for over a century. We are your neighbors, friends, and partners in making this a great place to live. Our employees make us a special place to do business. We are there for you when you need us. Come by and see us and find out what makes people say, that's my bank. Gilmer National Bank, an equal opportunity lender and member FDIC. Hey East Texas, Matt Darby here and I serve as one of the pastors at New Beginnings Baptist Church in Gilmer and in Longview. Let me ask you a question. Are you looking for hope in your life right now? We believe that the answer is Jesus Christ and every Sunday we fix our eyes on Him and we worship Jesus together. I want to invite you to one of our worship services at 8, 9, 30 and 11 in Gilmer and in Longview. We'll see you there. At Farmers Insurance, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a rock and wreck. Yeah! He rocked and rolled right into it, but we covered it. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. When tragedy strikes, you don't want to be in a position where you're second guessing your lawyer's ability or the resolve to get you fairly compensated. When you hire Godars and Young, you know you're hiring a law firm that has nationally ranked settlements and verdicts. We have over two decades of experience holding 18 other companies accountable for their negligent action. Don't make the mistake of hiring anybody else. Hire the best. Hire Godars and Young. Extra, extra, read all about tonight's game in Thursday's Gilmer Mirror, complete with pictures, coaches' comments, and a look at next week's opponent. The Gilmer Mirror has been serving the citizens of Upshur County since 1877. You know, reading the news online is fine, but there is nothing like physically picking up your hometown paper, turning the pages, and catching up on everything going on in our area. If you're not subscribing to the Gilmer Mirror, you're probably missing out. 
It's one of my favorite publications, and I know you'll love it too. The Gilmer Mirror, www.gilmermirror.com. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student-athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Because of investments in our surrounding infrastructure, eTex offers advanced improvements in internet connections, service experience, and quality of life for our customers. The driving force for eTex has been to create a state of the art company using both the latest technology and local expert technicians, people you know. And best of all, a certified support team that delivers quality support within hours, not days. eTex, local support from the team you trust. Growing up as a child in East Texas, I was always taught that I had to outwork my opponent. That same principle has carried over into our law firm. And for over 20 years, we've outworked each and every insurance company, lawyer, or corporation we've gone against. If you look at our results, they prove it. Put us to work for you, and we promise to never stray from the same East Texas work ethic that you were raised on. For 120 years, First National Bank of East Texas has been earning the trust of our customers and our East Texas communities through ever-changing times with the commitment, dedication, and financial strength of our network of branches across East Texas, fulfilling dreams big and small and earning your trust every day. Let our friendly expert staff serve you and your family's financial needs. First National Bank of East Texas, together we're better. All right, Jeff, we're back with our halftime show, and we will turn the lights on here so that we can read some statistics uh, and uh, review the first half. 24 to 14, your score. The Buckeyes lead by 10 and get the ball back to start the second half, and uh, what a first half it was. Yeah, it was a great first half for the Buckeyes, and I'll tell you what, Todd, I, we said this all through the first half, uh, but uh, the Buckeyes looked fantastic. Yeah, they played I mean, great. they really played well. Now, the, the, the frustrating thing, if you're a Buckeye fan, is that uh, you get down inside the 30-yard line. In fact, three times. Yeah, and, and one time on the five-yard line and unable to get in the end zone because actually this game right now shouldn't be uh, to 20, what are we? 24-14. 24-14. Yeah, it, it should be it probably. Should be probably 35 at least, 35-14. Yeah, yeah. Actually, 35-7 because yeah, they cause shouldn't they, have got yeah, them. Right. So, so that just shows you how well the Buckeyes have played. I mean, we had obviously – uh, the, the, these guys are fighting the, is the best they can to stay in this football game. We said in the beginning of halftime that the most important element, to, the key to success, was to contain Townley, the quarterback, for Caddo Mills from the outside and to take away his, his draw in the middle. The Buckeyes have done that tonight. Outside his, one play. He had one play that he broke, and other than that, he has a seven-yard run. Other than that, he's got nothing. His net yards, if it wasn't for the long play, would have been lost. Negative. That's it right. would have been negative. So the Buckeyes in the first half have completely been able to own Townley, which was the key to this football game, and they are playing great football tonight. They're playing mistake-free football. They're playing hard, they're crisp, they're sharp, they're executing, and we are playing a very good Cattle Mills football team. And look, the stats are pretty uh, phenomenal. Uh, Gilmer is uh, winning the stat battle tonight. Uh, first of all, first downs, listen to this. Gilmer, 16 first downs to uh, the Foxes uh, from Cattle Mills, only four first downs. I couldn't believe it was swayed that much. Listen to this, rushing attempts. Gilmer has 28 rushing attempts. 
154 yards. The Foxes have 16 rushing attempts for 122 yards. Two of those were all of that. Yeah. They had two, two 60 plays, yards runs, basically. Two plays were 120 of that 120. That's exactly right. And then passing yards, listen to this, phenomenal. Talk about taking away a great quarterback. Uh, Gilmer uh, was 9 of 20 for 155 yards in the first half. Uh, Townley uh, for Cattle Mills was 6 of 13 for 42 yards. That's the biggest difference in this football game so far. Total offense plays Gilmer, 48 plays for 309 yards. Uh, the Foxes only have 29 for 164 yards. Uh, Gilmer's even winning time of possession, 13-19 to 10-41. And then I thought this was kind of interesting, Todd. Uh, both teams struggling tonight on third down conversions. Gilmer's con converted four of eight, and uh, the Cattle Mills has converted uh, four of seven. So Gilmer basically... Uh, winning the stats and also winning the football game really should probably be, uh, like we said, a little further ahead than 10 points given the stats that we just read and the way the game has actually been tonight. But Cattle Mills has fought their way back in here because of Gilmer's uh, inability to convert three scores inside the 30-yard line. Yeah, and it's it's imperative right now, Jeff, that, that we break that cycle and that Gilmer, who's going to receive the kickoff, take the ball and go down and score. Uh, no, however you got to do it, that is imperative that that happens, Jeff, because if we can get that done and go up 17, potentially get a stop and then, and then, and then start basically putting Cattle Mills in a situation where they have got to run the football, putting them in a situation where they absolutely have to, uh, um, have to push and have to go score as much as they possibly can. That is where we want to have Cattle Mills going into the second half is playing panicked, playing desperation football uh, because they got a lot of bags, uh, tricks in the bag, Jeff, still with special teams, et cetera. They're in this game right now, down 10 points. They are in this game. They get a stop, they go score. They're within one score in this in this game. Right now is the most Drum critical time that the Buckeyes actually Jimmy. take the ball, go score, and put the pressure on Cattle Mills. Let's get this game, you know. Uh, yeah, the, what, what you can't do is let them get back in the game. Yeah, you, you can't let them back in. You've got to score right here on this possession. Uh, so you're going to go up 24-14. They're going to go all the way up to uh, 32, no, 31, and, uh, and just 14. And, and then, you know, just continue that. If you can get another turnover, that's great. But you got to capitalize. You can't give away three opportunities not to score. Yeah, and, Jeff, the Buckeyes are 193-6 and six when they score 30 or more points. Yeah. So it is a big deal right now if the to Buckeyes get to that 30 point can marker. get to that 30-point margin. All right, so the Buckeyes are going to take over, and uh, the first offensive possession will be theirs as they won the toss at the beginning of the game and elected to defer uh, to the second half. So they'll be getting the kickoff. Kickoff return team is on the field, and uh, Cattle Mills hadn't made their way out yet, but they're bringing their kickoff team tonight uh, onto the field. And, and it might be interesting. You never know how aggressive these guys are. They could come out with an onside kick right from the start. You never They're down know. 10 points. You never know. And uh, so it, this could be interesting. We'll see what they decide to do. Buckeyes have got some good hands up on the front line anticipating it. Um, so we'll see what they're thinking about doing. Uh, if they know that that is a uh, that is a possibility as well. So a lot of energy in the stands tonight, Buckeyes and Cattle Mill fans. They're going to do a high pooch kick. Going to be caught by Dylan Fluellen. Dylan dodges some tackles down the sideline. He goes and look at this guy. He's going to take it. No, they tripped him up at the last minute. I mean, he, he, I thought he had already broke it, and they tripped too. him at the last second. He is down at the 30-yard line of Cattle Mills. What a great field position to start with if you're the Buckeyes. Wait, we've got Jason some kind Johnson of a flag down here exactly. all the way back at the 35-yard line. They're talking to Coach Metzl. Correction, that'll be Adrian back. Let's see what this call is. I don't know if there's a flag. And... Uh, yeah, they're talking to Coach Mitchell, so that's not a good sign. That could mean that they're going to have to kick it again. Or, or uh, depending on what the penalty that might be assessed, personal foul.
Okay, oh, so they're gonna gracious. they're gonna give us a personal foul against Rowan Fluell and, for blocking. Yeah, and uh, and they're gonna back us up 15 yards. So instead of being from the spot of the from foul, the spot of the foul, that so is instead a of being on the seven yard penalty. Yeah, that is a 37 yard penalty. Still good field position, just not exactly what we uh, had hoped for. Look at this. It's not a 37-yard penalty. Make it. They're going to take make this it all the way back to the 21-yard line. 52-yard yard penalty. Instead of the the 30-yard line, we're going to be on the 21-yard line. Uh, instead of the 30-yard line of Cattle Mills, we're at the 21-yard line of the Buckeyes. Unbelievable, Jeff. So uh, <laughs> you just like to see the Buckeyes shove one down their throats right here. Heavy pressure. Tennyson running for his life. Picking up some blocks, cuts out to the left side, and picks up some decent yardage. I think he may even got down. a first down. Yeah, that is a great wheels by Brandon. He Tennyson ran 75 to yards to get it, but he got it. Yeah, let's bring up. That's going to be called. Let's call that second and a half a yard to go. <laughs> and that's that's just Can unbelievable to me, Jeff, that that would be called out of bounds by the side judge over here. That's a 51-yard penalty, Jeff. Unreal. That's a big one. Here's the snap. Hand off to Haynes. He's got guys chasing him. He finds a gap, gets the first down all the way to the 39-yard line. Nice run by Haynes. Yeah, and the Buckeye the offense the picking it up on the ground as they've got the these out. these Cattle Mills Foxes who have been playing most of those guys both ways. Well, Look at the hands on the hips, Jeff. Line, and we're only two plays first in to, to the second half. And let's see if the Buckeye offense can really put, uh, put their will here, stamp it on this game. All right, quarterback keeper. And uh, they did a good job staying home out here. This outside, I think it might have been a corner or maybe a linebacker outside, left side. He was just sitting there waiting on Tennyson, who's able to get a couple out of that one. Second and eight. That's a design quarterback draw. And to your point, Jeff, guy stayed home and did his job. Yeah, that was the outside linebacker that just squatted. Brandon Tennyson rolls to his left, dumps one complete out to uh, Mason Hurt. Mason's gonna fall forward to the 45 yard line. Can bring up third and four, Jeff. The Buckeyes need the 49 for a first down. Uh, Mace got out to, uh, they just- uh, Yeah, they just gave him a terrible spot. They backed him up a yard. So now it's third and five from the 44. We're not getting any breaks here in, to open up the second half so Jeff, far. Look at, they're leaving number 17, Rolf Llewellyn, completely open right here. All right, they're gonna hand off. Number 38, Haynes, comes around the corner. Turns up field, gets the first down. What a block there by number 17, Rolf Llewellyn, who absolutely <laughs> depletes number three, the linebacker, and just all of a sudden there was space there. Buckeyes into Cattle Mills territory as they are just eating up the ground game right now behind Haynes and uh, number 11, Brandon Tennyson with his legs. So far, uh, they've only gone to the to the air one time here on this drive, now into Cattle Mills territory. Yeah, and if you don't have to, do what's working. First and 10 from the Cattle Mills 49 yard line. Here's the snap. Brandon, heavy pressure, rolls to his left side, gonna be forced to run. He's gonna pick up about three on the carry. Running them sideline to sideline. And Jeff, look at all the hands on all the hips for Cattle Mills as they're saying, hey, you know, that's one, two, three, four, that's five guys with their hands on their hips right now as they're run, really literally being run sideline to sideline by Coach Lipsy and this offensive staff. You know, picking up two and three here, but Jeff, they're making those guys literally run, run wind sprints. Empty right backfield. Now. Offsides against Cattle Mills. And uh, they, are, they were sending number nine on a stunt. Yeah, and the referee. And he, got, he came like three yards into the backfield before we even thought of snapping the ball. Yeah, that's a free play if it's offsides. And Cattle, the, the referee on the on the sign judge here blows the play dead. So they're calling that unabated to the quarterback. Well, then you know what? They need to check yeah. whose quarterback it is. Yeah. Because unabated to the quarterback to us is called a setup. <laughs> Having a guy run full speed at Brandon Tennyson is just basically getting himself posterized. Yeah, he played. He called it dead. That should have been a free. He should have allowed that play to to go on. We could have got big yardage out of that. Here's the snap. Hands off to Haynes, left side, up the middle. Haynes goes, picks up another first down into the 35 yard line. And My Haynes just a having a, the game of his career tonight. Gets better and better and better with every snap, Jeff. He's so patient. And the more importantly, number three, Devion Smith standing over here getting well on the sidelines while the young sophomore does his thing. Handoff up the middle, Haynes broke one. Up the middle, he's still going. 
down to the 15 yard line. And Haynes is just. Ditto what we just said for the last play. <laughs> yeah, just putting on a clinic. I Into mean, he is really zone, getting after it. And the Buckeyes have got to hit pay dirt here, Jeff. Fakes the handoff to Haynes, dumps one to Roe Flew Ellen, and Roe gets in down to the 10. Good block by Dylan Flewellen as big brother blocking for little brother there. Picks up about six yards and they need three more yards in their first and goal, Jeff. All right, one back in the backfield. Fakes the handoff. He has to step up, forced out of the pocket, breaks three tackles, headed to the end zone. Will he get Touchdown, there? Touchdown, Brandon Tennyson! Brandon Tennyson oh gets my goodness. the score and then lands in a tire <laughs> on the end of the end zone. What a great job what by Brandon Tennyson to Jeff, get through the middle, breaks about can, three can, tackles, can we and get gets a, all the way into the end zone. Can we get an score. official timeout? Because there's four uh, items of laundry that are on the field, and it's all green at the seven-yard line, the five-yard line, the four-yard line, and the one-yard line, as Brandon Tennyson literally just left a wake of dudes laying on the ground. And Brandon Tennyson now has gotten the Buckeyes to that magical 30-point number with 7.59 left. Extra point to come, up and good. 31-14 Buckeyes, we'll be right back after these messages. Winningham Chevrolet is proud to support the Gilmore Buckeyes. Don't miss out on the 15% savings on the 2020 Blazer, Equinox, and Trax. And remember, our service department is now open Saturday, eight to 12. Stop by and see Jay, Roger, and Lindsay at Winningham Chevrolet. The Med Shop Pharmacy in Gilmers features a drive through pharmacy for all your prescription and over-the-counter drug needs. Place refills using our free phone app Rx2Go or use our convenient auto refill line 24-7 at 903-680-2626. Stop by and see our unique gift items for all occasions or visit us on the web at gilmermedshop.com. And don't forget, the Med Shop is your flu shot and vaccine headquarters for the fall and winter season. The Med Shop Pharmacy, your friendly hometown pharmacy. All right, don't look now, but the kicker is not Chavez. It is number 29, or it's, no, it is not, Chavez. it's Chavez, not Hernandez. And you know, uh, they may be setting them up for an onside later. I doubt they'll do it right here, no need. But, uh... Chavez has got a deadly onside kick if he decides to do it. Left footed. And uh, he can certainly do it. They're gonna let him kick this one. They're gonna, he kicks it deep actually. They're gonna call that a delay of game. Unbelievable. This line, this umpire over or this line judge over here, Jeff is just killing us. All right, so we're going to kick it again. All right, we're back here, folks. Going to kick it again. So we're backed up five yards, and uh, we're going to kick it again. And uh, Chavez put some leg into that last one, kicked it deep, and he does it again. And that ball is going to be caught at the 20, <laughs> and he steps out of bounds. Not a wise move. Not a wise move. He should have let that one hit the Absolutely. turf. Absolutely. And uh, hit the turf, and I think he kind of tweaked his hamstring. And uh, if not for Chase, it's the outside linebacker, number three. And uh, that's Neil, line. and he's been chasing uh, Haynes and Brandon Tennyson from sideline to sideline for uh, – Two and a half quarters now already. Yeah, and we just found out that uh, evidently the camera crew that's filming the game for NH, uh, NFHS. NFHS, their camera went down. So uh, hopefully people are figuring out to go to GilmerBuckeyes.com and just listen to the game. Handoff up the middle, the Foxes, and that's a good run. He's got about nine yards on that carry. 
Nice run there up the middle by the Fox. Connor Pounds on the carry. And uh, 747 left to play in the third. 31 to 14. Gilmer got this ball game in hand right now. See if they can hold on to that uh, big lead. They're coming hard after number two, Townley. He dumps one, completes the pass, breaks a tackle, gets out past the 40 to the 44. And they've got a flag on the play that's going to be holding against Caddo Mills. That's going to back up second and, and, and uh, two, Jeff. That's going to turn that into second down and about. Holding, Holding against the offense. The Dodd family is celebrating. elated. <laughs> They're celebrating the referees for the first time ever. You saw that, that what happened this week that a player from a, a school during a, a playoff game went and tackled a referee. Yeah, I, I could have sworn that was Joe Dodd in a wig. <laughs> when I saw that, I instantly thought of Joe. Yeah, you, you, yeah that was Joe Dodd in a wig. That was, that, he was framing somebody for sure. Joe Dodd is not a fan of referees, I'll tell you. <laughs> Second and 13 now for the Foxes. Man in motion. Quarterback rolls to his left side. He's under heavy, heavy pressure. He's going to throw it away. Almost picked off. That's a flag, Jeff. I don't think he got – I think he didn't throw it past the line of scrimmage. No, he did, did not. That's going to be intentional grounding. We're going to see what they're going to call. Did they say he threw it past the marker? That's the question. Or did they say he was down, his knee was down? No, he he, he let go of the ball, I think, before his knee. Yeah, they're not going to give us two breaks in a row. Nevertheless, third down and 13, and the defensive coordinator – Tommy Edwards brought pressure on that play. That's a Rona Man, that's blitzing you, you outside. Talk about some heavy pressure too. And they have just shut Townley down in this game. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, bro, right he, now, he doesn't know whether to wind his watch or stack BBs because the Buckeyes have just taken him out of this game, but all but one play tonight. And and here comes the pressure. They are coming after him. He has dumped one off and he's got a man open. Down the sideline, big play for the Foxes, first down. Yeah, that's that's what Townley does. You got him third down and 12, and you've got to you've got to keep him contained. Once he gets outside the pocket, Jeff, there's all kinds of, of scramble drills that they run. They keep this alive. And really, Jeff, that was their, their whole life, because if they would have not converted on that first down, the Buckeyes are going to get a great field position, already up 17 points in this game. All right, let's see what they're going to do here. They're going to pull up quick pass. I think he caught it, but he may be good for about four yards. We got a uh, a uh, injury timeout on the field. We've got a fox down. And so while they're checking him out, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Please join Jeff Rash and Alan Metzel each Monday morning for the Gilmer Buckeyes Coaches Show. Every week, Jeff and Alan discuss elements of the program, speak with special guests, give player updates, review key plays from the prior week, and give insights on the opponent for the current week. As a fan, this is your chance to go into the locker room and behind the scenes. To view the Coaches Show, go to GilmerBuckeyes.com and click on the Coaches Show button. Go Buckeyes! Don't miss the 4A UIL Football State Championships this December. For more information, visit UILTexas.org. Well, uh, injury timeout over. They've got the player off the field. We hope that young man's okay. He walked off on his own. Should be fine. So the Buckeyes looking at a second and five. Ball spotted on the 44. The Foxes trying to drive the field, feeling desperate with 634 left to play in the third. Down 31 to 14. Here's the snap, heavy pressure. Drops one over the middle. Almost picked off, just couldn't get there. That, was, that ball was overthrown and we've got a flag on the play. Looks like they're gonna call maybe a late hit. Oh, come or roughing on. the passer. They're gonna call roughing the passer on the Buckeyes and that's gonna be an automatic first down you against the Buckeyes. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tristan McCann coming out of the game. <laughs> and that is a big penalty. That's 15 yards automatic first down. 
and that takes them across midfield, gives them an automatic first down. They're now in the Buckeye 41-yard line. So this is where you need to break the, the back of their momentum. We need to turn yeah, over we, right here. And, we, we and they're had, going to the air, and they're getting kind of reckless. If you'll yeah. notice, he's frustrated. He's, he's feeling the pressure of time not in his favor. Watch him. He's going to get sloppy and start slinging passes into double coverage. Drops back, looking to pass, launches one down the sideline. How is that not off? And there is a flag. There's a flag from the line judge on this side. I'm not sure what he's what he's going to throw that on. Literally, the deep, the offensive man reached up and grabbed Jaden Griffith and yanked on his shoulder pad. Yeah, that's offensive pass interference. Yeah, that's you got two flags the on the play. Right. You've got one in the middle of the field and you got one on the sideline over here. The line judge on our side of the field, the visitor oh, side. They're going to say, is that illegal man downfield? What do you say? Illegal man downfield. So that's going to uh, back them up five yards. It'll be repeat first down, but it'll be first and 15. Ball's going to be on now the 44-yard line of the Buckeyes. So uh, repeat first down, though. They've got a back in the backfield, two receivers right, two receivers left. Townley. Getting frustrated. Here's the snap. It was a low one. He steps up. He's going to get sacked. Is he? They got their gay got him. Yeah, he ran Townley into Matt goes Burton. down at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he ran into Matt Burton. He spun around, and Matt Burton, who was coming from the outside, peeled back, coming right back down the middle of the field and just met him as soon as he spun out of that. That's going to be a loss of one. Second down and 16 now. And, Jeff, to your point, lots of lots of uh, desperation now coming from Townley as uh, the Buckeyes are playing basically man under coverage, and they are bringing heat with just three men and getting pressure. And uh, let's see what happens here. Second down and 14 now. Buckeyes backing into zone. All right. Empty backfield. Townley's in the backfield by himself. Steps up around him out of pressure. He's going to throw. Got a man open, overthrows him. Thank the Lord. Incomplete. That would have been a that would have been a first down. And Easily. it throws over. He has the he's rolling with pressure and has to throw against his body, uh, opposite side, and uh, just overthrows it. That was a lucky break for the Buckeyes. Third and 15. Ball on the 47 yard line of the Buckeyes. Two Big receivers right, play. two Obvious. receivers left. Obvious four down territory here, Jeff, inside Buckeye territory. We Buckeye fans stop. making a lot of noise. I don't know what the referees are doing, basically stepping in here. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what they're doing here. They're getting, it, they're getting them set here. I don't know what the delay is here, but that's okay. We're not down on the field. So uh, desperation setting in here. Third and 15, Townley drops back. He's out of pressure, forced out of the pocket. Gonna have to run out of bounds for nothing. The Buckeyes stop him, it's fourth and 15. Yeah, and you're down 31-14, Jeff. 519 left to play in the third quarter. All three timeouts, that's plenty of time. I think you punt this football right here and you force Gilmer to try to go the distance. Yeah, they're bringing a punt team yeah, in. Yeah, that's they're, they're the not... smart move here, and you got a big punter. You try to pin Gilmer deep and potentially get a turnover here because fourth and 15, you cannot afford to give the ball back to the Buckeyes about yeah. you know about the 40-yard line. Yeah, we still got a lot of ball game left. 519 in the third, Gilmer 31, uh, and uh, Cattle Mills 14. But lots of ball game left to play, so they're going to play the long game here. Big punt. Going to hit the ball, hit the ground. Rowan's going to field that one. Comes up field. Look at this down the sidelines. Got a block. Look at this return all the way out to the 45 yard line. And That's got to be a flag. Now, there, I don't hit. see a flag. They took him about five yards out of bounds and planted him in the turf on the on the home side. How is that not a flag, Jeff? Yeah, they they you know they called the block on on the. What's funny is they called the block on Rowan on our side earlier. And they take you five that. yards out of bounds. Yeah. So uh, questionable call. Buckeye fans not happy about that one. Well, and uh, right now, Jeff, look out. Number 14, Dylan Flewellen is man to man on the outside. 5:06 left to play here in the third quarter. Big return all the way out to the 47 yard line. You're man to man with Dylan. Why not take a shot right here? All right. They're gonna hand it off to Haynes. They're gonna take him for drop him for a loss. Four-yard loss. 
Missed a block there over the left-hand side. I'm not sure who the, the left uh, side of that line is there, uh, but uh, just didn't get the, the number nine coming straight through. It's going to be a loss of three, second down and 13 now. But once again, Jeff, you got Dylan Flewellen. Well, there's a safety creeping out over the top now, but the Buckeyes are probably going to go to the air. All right, Tennyson drops back. Look at this. It's batted down, and I thought Tennyson picked it up and caught it. And uh, evidently, they say it hit the ground. It looked like he, he he actually caught it. And listen to this. You want to talk about a good ball game? I'm getting updates here. Graham. Carthage 24 to seven, or excuse me, Salina takes the lead 21 to 20. Both teams look like college players, uh, is what they're reporting. So here's the snap. Tennyson rolls to his right side. Got time. Forced out of the pocket. He runs up the middle. He's going to get about six yards on the carry. But that's going to put him in uh, that's fourth be and eight. Fourth and eight. I think they're going to go punt this ball right here, Jeff. 4-13 yeah. left and counting. 30 seconds to take off the play clock right here. That's smart football by Coach Metzl. Well, he knows there's a lot of game left here. This is 4-0-2 left in the game, or in the third quarter, rather. Jose Hernandez lined up the punt. Buckeyes not in a hurry here. They're going to let the play clock click all the way down. Hernandez in the punt with five seconds left. And Hernandez puts his foot in it, and it's going to go out of bounds around the 20-yard line. So uh, that's good. We got uh, first and 10 on the 20-yard line, so Salina's got 80 yards to go. And again, you can feel, Todd, that the pressure that Salina's offense has got to be feeling right now. You're in the fourth. Cato Mills. I'm sorry. That's Y'all know who we're playing. You're previewing. Yeah, ignore your moron announcer. You got you got 81 yards to go. You're looking at four, 340 left to play in the third quarter, and you're down. 17 points. 17 points. So you are feeling the pressure. It's fourth round of the playoffs. High energy in the stadium. They got to go score right here, or, or it's, well, it's pretty much. This is where reach. they get dangerous. They'll start slinging things that they sh shouldn't throw, and this is a good opportunity right here for the Buckeyes to get a pick. Man-to-man -man coverage at the top side with Jaden Griffin on that big tall receiver out there, and uh, they're going to throw a go route down the side. Nope, handoff up the middle. Burton drags him down. Several Buckeyes in on the tackle. That was uh, Burton and uh, Cody Gidry. Good run, though. Got about seven yards on the carry, second and three. Yeah, and that's not a play, Jeff, that takes 30 seconds off the clock right now that the Buckeyes are too worried about. They just don't want to get any big plays right here. They want to force everything in front of them and try to get to a third down scenario and get off the field. All right, here's the snap. Handoff up the middle once again. He's fighting his way forward, probably got the first down. Adrian Baxter on the carry. Yeah, two straight running plays, and uh, for the Buckeyes, that is a minute and change off the clock. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains here out to the 32. And All right, Salina, first and 10, ball spotted on their own 31, 32 yard line. Handoff, number five, right side. Does a great spin move and then gets planted by number 44, <laughs> Matt Burton. He turns around, he spins out of yeah. one tackle and into a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, Matt Burton's lined up at right defensive end, Jeff. He just scrapes down the line of scrimmage, patiently waiting for the cutback. And when the cutback comes, the big cat I tell you what, for a guy boom. that big, he can move, he too. Really this can. guy can run. And he is devastating out there on that defensive end position. Second and eight for Cato Mills. Pitch, they ran a jet sweep. Matt Burton. And then Matt Burton turns around <laughs> off a block and grabs him. And uh, they are just shutting him down. Third down and long. And this is Jeff after a two minute and 50 second runoff. We're under two minutes to play now. And here's Cato Mills third and long, right where they don't want to be. Buckeye Watch. fans are into this game, buddy. I mean, they are into this game. Here's the snap. Quarterback's flushed out of the pocket to the right side. Throws downfield. Got a man open. Drops Drop it. it. Unbelievable. He drops it. That was an easy first down in a 20-yard game. And they drop it. And that's going to bring up fourth and eight. And they'll have to punt. Yeah, I think you have to, Jeff. And you're going to basically bring everything down to one quarter. 
you're down 17 points and you're going to have to basically say, hey, we got to give the ball back to the Gilmer offense. We got to score three times and keep them from scoring at all. And time is now not exactly on the Game side of these Cattle Mills the Foxes. Proxies. Jeff, the Buckeyes, once again, of the last 20 years, 193 and six when they scored 30 points, 31 to 14 right now. And things are looking better and better for the Buckeyes. All right. They're lining up in punt formation. And here's the kick. It's a high one. Not going to necessarily go that far, and it takes a neutral bounce. It just absolutely dies. Anytime you get one that high in the air, you're not going to get a lot of roll on it. So uh, first and 10 from the 35, the Buckeyes come back on the field ready to move. You're in the way of Kick on the throw right. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> First and 10 Buckeyes from their own 34-yard line. Jeff, a minute 36 left in the third quarter, up 31-14. Now we can start talking about nails in the coffin. The Buckeyes can, can have a maintain a long drive here, balance run and pass, and go score. They will uh, take themselves a long way right. towards the All semifinals. Right. They stunted, and that uh, quick pass out to Rowan Fluell. And look at that second effort that he dives for the – first down marker and they're going to give it to him they're going to move the chains what a great job Llewellyn does they sent number nine on a stunt and uh it backfired because they dumped a quick pass to Roland Flewellen and he was out here one-on-one -on -one and just uh yeah, second not, effort that's not fair it, it's like trying to trying to drink a gallon of water all at the same time it just flowed right around you drops back trying to set up a screen not it's not there he's gonna have to throw it away and he does good job there by Tennyson excellent move there by BT throw it in the stands <laughs> take second down and 10 and live to fight another day and he's getting better and better Jeff at managing the game and you notice now he's 13 snap or 13 games worth of snaps as the starter deep and under the tutelage of course of coach Nyes there has been a professional quarterback Snuff Godfrey who is the quarterback around these parts uh, he's just getting better and better and that's good Buckeyes move. shift Quarterback keeper, around the right side. Look at B, look at Brandon just taking what they'll give him and just flowing like water uh, through his blocks. Does a good job of not getting impatient and just taking what they'll give him. Great run there. That was about a nine-yard run. It's going to be third and one. Yeah, I, I really wonder now if Coach Gibson is going to look back at this game in Pleasant Grove and say uh, that Townley and, and Brandon Tennyson are in the same league. Because uh, the stats say otherwise, Coach Gibson, if you're out there listening. Well, so far in this game, for sure, Tennyson having a great game. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle. 38. Gets the first down. Bounces out to the right side. Headed down the sideline. And forced out of bounds at the 23-yard line. What a great run by Haynes. And I just love watching this young man. He's such a great kid. So, so nice. And what a great strong runner. And, man, we've got him for... The rest of the season and two more. A great sophomore class. I was talking to, uh, to to Todd down here on the coaching staff, and he basically said everybody talks about how great the eighth grade is. What about that sophomore class? Yeah, it's sophomore class, and I'm glad my son is in that class. Touchdown, Touchdown Buckeyes. Buckeyes. Blown coverage. Mason Hurt is, is wide open. Tennyson. Mason Hurt is wide open to the left side end zone, and BT does a good job looking up and seeing the blown coverage. Dumps it out to Mason, who goes up and gets it. And another touchdown for the Buckeyes. 37-14, extra point left to come. 35 seconds in the third quarter. And, folks, the Buckeyes have just opened the ice tray and started putting this one on the cold stuff as extra point left to come. And uh, that is just Brandon Tennyson seeing the field, taking what the defense gives them. Extra point up and good. 38-14, 35 seconds left in the third quarter. We'll be right back after these messages. Two-time Hall of Fame inductees, Brent Godarzy and Marty Young. Back-to-back -back number one trucking firm in the nation. Back-to-back -back best attorney and best law firm in East Texas. Crowley Funeral Home has been serving families in Gilmer since 1883. Funeral director and Gilmer High School graduate Troy Murray leads the professional staff at Crowley Funeral Home and is committed to providing dignified, respectful, and compassionate assistance to every family in their time of need. Crowley Funeral Home feels strongly about maintaining high standards of excellent service 
while still keeping prices affordable. At Crowley Funeral Home, we treat your family as our own. Lines up to kick off. And we're back after a 60 yard drive and Brandon Tennyson to Mason Hurt for the touchdown. Brings this score to 38 to 14. Buckeyes lead with 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Number 29, Dominique Chavez, once again the left footed kicker on to kick off for the Buckeyes. Normally he's been the pooch kicker. He's got the short one set up now. He pooch kicks this over to the right hand side and it's fielded once again and fumbled. Goes out of bounds and poor number three for, for the, the Cattle Mills night. Foxes. Having a rough night. Savion Neal and uh, he tries to field it and it just bobbles out of bounds and he's got the, it just That's takes exactly the what happened to him a while ago except instead of being on the 20, it's two yards it's, further. It's, yeah. All he's got to do is let that hit and roll out of bounds, and they get the ball at, at, at basically the, the 35 yard well, line. And, that's, and they're going to be at the 24 yard line, so they're okay. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did Julie just say he's so embarrassed he don't want to go back in the dugout? That's, that's what she said. What Julie, Julie said. Skinner, <laughs> don't want to go back in the dugout. Look at this, big Mert, Bert, Matt Burton putting the pressure on the quarterback, but he is able to release it across the middle for a nine-yard pass completion to number 12. And uh, that's just a great job because he was under some heavy pressure. Now, right now, the Buckeyes will take their chances getting heat. Matt Burton just laying his ears back. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. Buckeyes going into the fourth quarter. 38-14 is going to be your lead, Jeff. We'll see if they do let this click off, and I am very sure that they will. Yes, they will. We will be right back after these messages in the fourth quarter. Buckeyes lead. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports. It's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Over there. All right, we're back to the action with 38 to 14. Buckeyes got this game in hand as we start the fourth quarter. Let me tell you what the story of the night uh, is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is Buckeye domination on both sides of the ball. And, and folks, I'm telling you, uh, I wish you were here. These guys are playing the best game, the game of their life tonight. They have played just almost perfect. And uh, defensively, they have played like absolute champions. Offensively, uh, just amazing. And uh, they're playing against a great, a great football team in Caddo Mills, but they are playing their best game all season. I can't wait for the coaches show to talk to Allen about this on Sunday. We'll post it on Monday morning, but I can't wait to see what he has to say uh, about this game. It's second and one. Uh, for Caddo Mills, they are in the shotgun. We're going to rush three men up front. They're going to pass, and he's going to run. He's going to step up and get the first down, plus a whole lot more around the left side, forced out of bounds around the 47, 48-yard line, and that's a great job there by the quarterback, uh, being patient and number, getting downfield. Number 24, Jerron Choice, has got outside contain out on that side, and uh, he just gets cracked by the receiver uh, and just basically tries to get up the field. And uh, you see, when you let Townley outside, he can hurt you with his feet. Uh, that's probably the best run in the second half so far, Jeff, for sure. All right, Townley drops back. He's looking to pass. Scrambling to his right. Look at him. He's backing way up, and he has to throw it away. And uh, he just had – he dropped back about 15 yards from the line of scrimmage when he released the ball. And Townley, he's just not seen this this year. This guy, keep in mind, he has had two games where he rushed over 200 yards this year. Yeah, and, and threw for another 250. Yeah, yeah, he he is the real deal, but the Buckeyes have shut him down tonight. This will be his, unless he just you know pulls off a miracle in the fourth quarter, this will be his worst game statistically all year. All year. By all far. year by far. So the Buckeye defensive plan, let's let's take our hats off to Alan Metzl and, 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 uh, Tommy, Edwards. and Tommy Edwards. They and have played staff. a good defensive game tonight. All right, empty backfield. Quarterback rolls to his right side. He's not going to be running. He throws. Got a man downfield. He's out of bounds. That's going to be no catch. No catch. Oh, no. The side, the half judge is saying. Yeah, they're saying no good. It, no it, catch. Everything's fine. He didn't have it. He was out of bounds by a yard. 
I don't know what they were even talking about. <laughs> Third down and 10 now, Jeff. 11.37 left in this ball game. Buckeyes have it well in hand, 38-14. But right now, it is basically number two and those other dudes in green against the black flag. And uh, number two in green uh, has been held to his season lows in all categories. Cattle Mills, who averages 42 points a game, Jeff, sitting on 14 right now going into the fourth quarter. Now it's time to start looking at those other scores, especially Salina and Graham. It looks like that's who the Buckeyes will get next week. All right, here's the snap. He drops back, rolls again to his right side. He's going to throw downfield, and again, he throws it out of bounds. He had no choice. It's fourth and ten. Buckeyes secondary playing out of their mind. Yeah, they are. They practiced this, Jeff, all week long with, with uh, uh, some very talented uh, speedsters, let's put it that way, uh, that uh, wear orange and black that, are, that were imitating number two Townsley. And it looks like they're going to come in and, uh, and, and punt this football. Let number me tell 12. you something. I know Carthage is a good football team, but I would love to have played them tonight the way these guys hey, are playing. I'm telling you right let's now. Let's have another week to get better. Oh, my gosh. We're just getting better and these better guys at this point. Have, these guys are playing so well tonight. I'm so impressed, and I'm so proud of them. Punt team on the field as it's fourth and ten. High punt. It's going to hit the turf around the 20. We're not going to get a return on this. And this time it takes a good bounce for Caddo Mills all the way to the 10-yard line. So that's a great punt on their part. So Buckeye offense making their way back out. First series of the fourth quarter. They got 90 yards to pay dirt. Let's see what they can get done. Yeah, let's see if the Buckeyes here, Jeff, can, uh, can just take a big chunk out of this clock and a big chunk out of the Caddo Mills heart and drive the length of the field right here. All right, two receivers right, one left, one back in the backfield. From the shotgun here, they dump it out, go up, it's a quick pass intended for Haynes, and uh, he's just not able to hold on to it. That's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, he had room to run, Jeff, and uh, hopefully here the Buckeyes can get the pick up a first down because you don't want to get three quick incomplete passes and get behind the chains and then punt from your own end zone. 11-19, that also incomplete passes would stop the clock. Two receivers right, one left. They hand it off to Haynes up the middle. Look he out. finds a seam. Runs into a blocker, but he picks up about nine good yards on the carry, and that's that's what we needed. So it's going to bring up third and, and about one, maybe two. Yeah, ran into the back of his own blocker. <laughs> Otherwise, he's still running because he had a seam. He's so patient back there. He kind of reminds you of, uh, of Davion Smith, how patient he is with the blocking. All right, here's the snap, and they're going to uh, – is that a timeout? That's a timeout, Buckeyes. And I'm not sure they didn't they didn't like something they saw. So they call a timeout right at the last minute. And uh, we'll take a timeout and be right back. Kilmer National Bank is your hometown community bank, serving people in East Texas for over a century. We are your neighbors, friends, and partners in making this a great place to live. Our employees make us a special place to do business. We are there for you when you need us. Come by and see us and find out what makes people say, that's my bank. Gilmer National Bank, an equal opportunity lender and member FDIC. Hey, East Texas, Matt Darby here, and I serve as one of the pastors at New Beginnings Baptist Church in Gilmer and in Longview. Let me ask you a question. Are you looking for hope in your life right now? We believe that the answer is Jesus Christ, and every Sunday we fix our eyes on Him and we worship Jesus together. I want to invite you to one of our worship services at 8, 9, 30, and 11 in Gilmer and in Longview. We'll All right, we're back here. 38-14 with 10.47 left in the game. Buckeyes need two yards. Quarterback keeper, he's going to get the two yards. And that will move the chains and keep the drive alive. And they're trying to keep the ball now on the ground as much as they can. There's a flag on the play. No, flag on, on the play. So hopefully <laughs> that's probably going to be, you know, where it was. It may be a hold against Gilmer. That'd be that's bad. That's going to be whatever it takes to, to move us backwards. So that would be unfortunate. Instead of getting the first down, we may get a 10-yard penalty. Let's see what they're going to call here. Maybe it was a face mask or something on the 
Cattle Mills, that'd be nice. That'd ball. be a nice Christmas surprise. conduct against Cattle Mills. Cattle Mills, it had to be a, a face mask. <laughs> no, it's unsportsmanlike conduct. And that's 15 yards. And that's going to put the Buckeyes all the way out close to the 40. That's going to be all the way to the 38 as the Buckeyes now are going to be able to drive with a little bit it's of It's been so here. long since I've seen the Buckeyes get a 15-yard penalty. I don't know how to react right now. <laughs> Show out of Joe. Yeah, exactly. I really do. We're getting yeah. our money's worth. Yeah, we're watching two good games tonight. The Dodd family in front of us and the game on the field. So first Buckeyes get a first down automatically. We'll take it. And a bonus of 15 yards. Here's the snap. Handoff to Haynes up the middle. Lowers his head and gets tackled forward for an eight-yard gain. Second and eight. He's so sudden, Jeff. When he bursts, uh, and just hits the hole. He is so sudden, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, you, he's standing literally behind his blockers, and then he's, he just bursts forward for seven yards, yard all the way out to the 45, and down we're down to 10 minutes left in this ball game. Buckeyes got it well in hand, 38-14 with this 20-point lead. You just like to drive down and score here, and then, uh, then they just run the clock. All right, quarterback keeper, left side, not a lot there, but somehow or another, Tennyson finds a way to get seven yards and a first down for the Buckeyes. Move the chains into Cattle Mills territory, and Jeff, Brandon Tennyson probably knocking on the door of 100 yards at this point, as uh, he has been a primary weapon with his feet. And uh, I think uh, he's just proven, Jeff, from a quarterback standpoint, who the king of the hill is out here tonight in commerce. All right, first and 10 for the Buckeyes. They hand it off to Haynes. He bounces out to the left side. Got plenty of room to run. The clock continues to run as he picks up seven or eight good yards. And guess what? Uh, I just asked Mark, and uh, Tennyson is at 134 yards so far that's in this game tonight. And I think I that's, I that's a record for him this, this year, possibly. Yeah. More carries, more planned carries than ever. But you talk about, you know, and I, it just makes me mad when you hear people talk about, oh, there's better runners out there than Brandon Tennyson. We don't run him. That's the point, because he can throw. He's called a quarterback. But when we need him to run, he's probably the best running back on our team. All right, they're going to let him run it again, and he's not going to get a first down. He might get a yard on that one, depending on the spot. I think maybe just back to the uh, line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up third and two. But more importantly than that, that keeps the clock running. We're at 845 left to play in the game, and uh, Buckeyes just playing out of their minds tonight. Well-coached football game tonight. And, Todd, you said it well ago. We're, we're literally – you know, we're four quarters or, or uh, eight quarters away from a state championship. That's that's close. Hand off to Haynes, and uh, he may have got a yard on it, and that's going to bring up fourth and one. Clock continues to run, 8-12. Yeah, we'll fourth and two, and we're going to go for it here. This will be a carry by... Haynes up the middle. He's going to get it. First down. First Buckeyes. down and keeps, the, about the, keeps the clock rolling. That's what we want. They're going to move the chains and keep the clock rolling. Down under eight minutes now left to play. Nothing left to do, Jeff, but bring out the daggers. Burn the clock and go score right here. Haynes is going to get uh, probably six or seven carries, however many it takes to get to pay dirt. He's 36 yards away right now and uh, I think he's going to get the bulk of these carries. All right, they're going to do a jet sweep around the left side to uh, Jaden, and I don't know how he just got through. He just snuck around people. I, I think he ran right by people. They didn't know he had the ball. <laughs> Literally. I mean, he really just weaved in and out for eight-yard carry. Move the chains First once again. First jet sweep tonight. Yep, move the chains once again. I tell you what, there's a lot of very tired foxes that have been run literally from sideline to sideline all night long. And it's paying dividends now. They, just, they well, don't say that he moved the chain. Second down and one. Stop well, the clock going out of bounds. Well, Caddo, it's second and less than one. Caddo Mills just shocked here at this performance tonight by the Buckeyes. Here's the snap. They hand it off up the middle. Look First at this. Down, what a great effort what by an Haynes. Effort. Hit five yards behind the line of scrimmage yeah, by two guys. He runs like, like uh, Earl Campbell. That's what he's kind of built like. He's uh -huh. got the big legs. And, he, and he, you hit him, you think you've stopped him, and then he lunges for another three yards. Yeah, He's just a great runner. Picks up the first down, keeps the chains moving, keeps the clock moving. We're down 
be down under seven minutes to go, Jeff. And remember, the Buckeyes started this drive uh, down inside their own 20. And oh. this is just basically grounded pound. Hey, and the hey Buckeyes listen to this. The it is 31 to 28, Carthage. That is a game over there with China Springs right now. We're going to go to the air. Picked it off. They picked it off. We tipped it up in the air. We tried to catch them sleeping. And uh, we ran a route. That pass was intended to uh, number two, Jaden Griffin. He tipped it, and it just landed right in the hands of the safety. So we're going to turn over. But but the good news is we started that drive down on the 10, and we drove all the way down there eating up half, half, of, the, the half of the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's it, it really doesn't matter because you know what the Foxes are going to come and do. And, it's, of course, it's Townley, the quarterback, that got that interception off the tip. And I guess Rowan Flewellen probably wishes that he had that one back. He hit him in the hands and just went right through his hands and tipped it up right into Townsend's hands. That's probably a touchdown otherwise. First and 10 Foxes. First and 10 on their own 22. Here's the snap. They're going to hand it off up the middle, and he's going to get nothing. They're going to drop him. Maybe he gets a yard on the forward momentum, and he's hurt. He yeah. got slammed so hard by, I think, might have, might have been Choice or Borda, but their running back is hurt. Yeah, he just got he just got pile-driven <laughs> on the tackle. Yeah, that looked like more like a WWE move <laughs> than a football tackle. We're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. At Farmers Insurance, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a rock and wreck. He rocked and rolled right into it, but we covered it. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. When tragedy strikes, you don't want to be in a position where you're second guessing your lawyer's ability or the resolve to get you fairly compensated. When you hire Godars and Young, you know you're hiring a law firm that has nationally ranked settlements and verdicts. We have over two decades of experience holding 18 other companies accountable for their negligent action. Don't make the mistake of hiring anybody else. All right, here's the snap. Rolls to his right side, looking to pass. Look at that poise in the pocket. And he hits a man. We got a flag on the play. That's going to be a hold and bring everything back. They pick up about a 10-yard pass right there. Illegal man downfield. That's the second time tonight Cattle Mills has had an illegal man downfield. I think they've got a guard that really wants to be a receiver. <laughs> yeah. That'll back them up once again. The Buckeyes in complete command here. 38-14 with 6.28 left to play in this game. And folks, the Gilmer Buckeyes are going to go take on whoever the winner is of Salina and Graham. And right now, Salina is up 21-20. Yeah, and in the Carthage contest. game, somebody, we, we had a typo. It was th It's actually 38-7 to Carthage. They're easily uh, winning that football game, so we apologize for the for the wrong score. So it's 37-7. to Wimberley is up big down south. They're going to play Carthage next week, uh, and it's pretty obvious that the Buckeyes are going to take on either Salina or Graham as the referees for whatever reason. I guess they're trying to navigate their way back down to Houston where they're from. And that is a legal man downfield for the second time that they call. And it's going to back them up once again. And turn this into second down and let's call it 13 now. Illegal man downfield on the Foxes. Five yard penalty. And we'll bring up second down 13. We put the scoreboard back up. Second right. 13 for the Foxes from now inside their own 20. Two receivers right, two left, one back in the backfield. And, and the story tonight is they've just been outmatched on every play. And uh, he's going to be forced out of the pocket up, upfield. Dodges would, would be tackler, but look at that pursuit by Jet Jones. It forces him out of bounds. He does get the first down and runs out of bounds. And uh, that th he did that a lot all year this year. You just haven't seen it a lot tonight. Yeah, it's he's been largely contained, and he's running for his life there because Matt Burton's coming from the back side. And Matt Burton, you want to talk about overmatched? He's he's a one-man wrecking crew. Whatever side of the ball he goes to, you know, he reminds me of Mac from Gladewater yeah. a couple of years. Look at him fighting his way into the backfield. 
runs to his right side. Quarterback's going to drop it. And look at this. Yeah. Jet Jones is there to drag it's him more down. Of the sack. What a great job. Drops him for a loss of about a yard. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Jet Jones is like five, I love him. Seven. I love that kid. And he is a tackling machine. Yeah. I'm well, telling you. He, 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 two yard he loss. looks like he's 220 pounds in the way that he Let me tell you runs. something. If the parents of Jet Jones are listening to this game by chance, if you don't like Jet, I'll adopt him. <laughs> We'll I, take like, him. I really like that kid a lot. I will take him. He can be a coming to the rash household. I bet he eats a lot. He may not be big, but I bet he eats a lot because he tackles like he's six foot four. Love watching this kid play football. Yeah, he is. He is pound for pound, Jeff. Probably oh, the oh, best defensive pound for pound. There's not. There, yeah, the best there's not, he may be the best one in the state. We had for oh, he may time. be the best one in the state. And uh, they get complete. They're gonna, no, he knocked it out of bounds. That was number nineteen. On the on the defense That's there, Parker what a great Gillow. job by Parker Gillo to uh, get in there and break that up. Third and long now, 5:26 left to play. It's probably four down territory, but it's all for not for the Foxes. They do not have the time, and really, I don't think they've got the the horsepower per se um, as as well as this black flag. Now, this played. is just a, a, a effort in futility, an exercise in futility. They're going to throw a go route. And uh, that's going to be broken up. And once again, Parker Gilo over there on the uh, man to man. Fourth and 12, and here comes the punting team as the Foxes are going to wave the white flag here, Jeff, with 521 left. Yeah, they, they know this, this game's football. over. Yeah. It, it, it's all over, but the, uh, you know, it's just a formality at this time. Fourth and 12, they're going to have to punt. The ball's on their own 29 yard line. 30-yard line. The Buckeye Rolling. fans and the Fox fans break for the exits, folks, because the Buckeyes are going to the Final Four. 38-14 with 521 left to play in this contest. Almost blocked. Let's see if Rowe decides to play this yeah, one on the gonna, bounce. He he's going to get a return. Breaks one tackle. Cuts up middle. Bounces outside. Breaks another tackle. Finally brought down at the 36-yard line. Great job. So here comes the offensive unit once again on the field who have just played magnificently tonight. They have. And, Jeff, here's the scary part. They left 21 points on the field. They left yeah, they 21 did. points yeah, on the field. Yeah, they did. This could be a 59-14 to 14 affair pretty simply. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a strongly worded letter to Alan Metzl about those 21 points. And I'm going to write your name at the bottom <laughs> well, of it. <laughs> I have a feeling over the next eight quarters we're going to need every one of oh, those absolutely. points. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But the exciting thing, Jeff, is that these Buckeyes not only came out here and played the best game of the season, but they're getting better. Handoff. Haynes, once again, he breaks it up the middle. Look at this guy. 13 yards and a first down on, down to the 49-yard line. Yeah, that's our JV running back, folks, that is putting on a clinic. How many yards does Haynes have on the night? I would dare say we're approaching 200. Let me check with the guru, Mark Skinner, on the stats on that quick. quick. Or for Haynes, and I have a feeling that he's about to have a lot more here in the next four minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, he may. Let's try to keep up with what he's uh, got. He's at 174, 174 right now. He's 26 yards for 200 yards. Remember, this was our JV running back just a couple of weeks ago. Handoff once again to Haynes. He gets uh, dives forward for a gain of two. Well, that's 176. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep he needs track. to break one more because we want him to get to that 200 mark. Ball is uh, on the 50. Second 500, and eight. Jeff, 515 total yards for the Buckeye offense. Wow. At the 50 yard line. Let's put it this way. Whoever between Solana and Graham is watching two, film next down, week eight. on their opponent is going to get pretty depressed when they wake up in the morning and watch these Gilmer Buckeyes. They have played fantastic here well, They've played just nearly perfect. Jet sweep, number 17, Rowan Fluell, and cuts it upfield. And look at him, how he, he's going down. Most people just go down. Ruined Rowan Ruined. keeps running Ruined. as he's falling. Yeah. And, like, gains literally keeps, yards. and he gains four extra yards. <laughs> Let me fall right just, over there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to fall down four yards right over yes. there. Yes, I mean, that's amazing. It's just a, a, the mark of a good runner. Third down four. Yeah, he is so natural, Jeff. I, I will tell you, as many NFL players as we've seen come through the system, come through Gilmer, and you've seen them as sophomores, and you say, man, that guy's got He's talent. Special. Jeff, I'll tell you, yeah, we have never had a sophomore that is that impressive. Kurt, Curtis Brown may not have done as not much. Not as a sophomore. Not as, as a, a sophomore. sophomore. Hand off to Haynes. Look out. Big running room. He's, he's working on that 200 yards. He's all the way down 
to the uh, 31 yard line. He's yeah, going to be knocking 15, on the door. And he is he is now just probably 187, 188. The 32 yard line. That's a gain of 14. Needs eight yards. No, 189. 189 yards for Haynes. He needs 11 more to break 200. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Hey, and Davion hey, Smith let me tell you something. got he's, to sit out tonight. He's 15 years old, by yeah. the way. Two Playing in round four, round four of the finals. He's 15 years old, about to put up 200 yards in this game. And how many touchdowns so far? At least one, right? Uh, he's got two. Two touchdowns. Two rushing touchdowns tonight. First two in, uh, of the game. And uh, he gets about another six or seven on that one. On yeah, I think he's probably up close to 192. Well, and, they're bring, and, they're, and here's what's depressing. They're going to bring in his uh, replacement. And Travis Hodnett, and on the, the other tackle, sophomore. The -yard line, Here come Haynes, two. and he should get a standing ovation. From yeah, the and Michael fans. Colbert's checking into the game now to run. 219, 218 left on the clock. Yeah, and Rowan Fluellen also coming out of the game, which is good. Dylan Fluellen coming out of the game, which is good. Under two minutes now left to play, and we're going to try to pick up this first down, and then we're going to try to go. the ball carrier, he gets tackled instantly. Uh, going to lose a couple of yards. Going to bring up third down. Carry down, third down. So we can figure out a way to get five here, Jeff. We're going to be able to take victory formation and take a victory into the final four the play, and the state semifinals. And we will see where we go. Now, word is we'd love to play at Cowboy Stadium next week if we get Graham Fans or Salina. In, in, and that would allow match. us to like be to able to. So and it's still 20, 21 still to Salina 20. Over Graham. It's been 21 20 for quite a while. That is a battle down there. Hand off to Colbert around the right side. And he is tackled from behind. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Now, Colbert running like the engine's really cold. <laughs> it's going to yeah. bring up fourth down and five. Here comes Braden Rash into the game. Let's see if Braden Rash can pick up a first down. Well, his, here, his rush, career rushing record is one carry for 15 yards. Let's Not see if a bad he can, average. They're going to hand it to him on fourth down, no pressure. Yeah. Fourth and five. If he doesn't get this, he's not riding home with me tonight. <laughs> All right, they're going to uh, stunt. Braden up the middle, cuts out to the left side, turns up field, fumbles the ball. I think the Buckeyes got it, and that's probably going to be for a first down. Rash on the carry brought down by John Howell. We'll wait on the spot. Yes, that is going to be a first down, so give it to him. <laughs> He's going to get a couple of... Yeah, he earned his supper. Yeah, 38. Uh, I think that's his. He got the first down last time he carried the ball. So he did. He's, he's not bad on third or fourth down. One more snap, victory formation. And the Buckeyes are going to take a 38-14 to 14 lead back on the bus. And one more week at least as the Buckeyes are going to be one step away next week from a state championship appearance. Here's the snap. BT takes the knee, and, and look Buckeyes at this. win. 38 to 14, and I'll bet you the people around the state are going, uh-oh. Here comes Because when Cato Mills came back at the last 20 seconds to beat Pleasant Grove, everybody went, whoa, they're the real deal. When you look on the scoreboard tonight, I bet there are stadiums all over Texas when they were announcing 38 to 14 tonight going, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Regional so, uh, champion, Gilmer Buckeyes. Right Trophy now, it's still in the fourth quarter. Salina leads 21 to 20. And is that what's remaining in the game? Yep. With just a few seconds left in the game. So it looks like it's going to be Gilmer Salina. Again. Which is what we kind of figured. Kind of kind of figured. figured. Looked and like Graham was going to pull it out tonight, but they didn't. So congratulations to Coach Alan Metzel and his entire coaching crew. They did a great job this year. Buckeyes win 38-14. We're moving on from the fourth round to the fifth round. And Todd, then there were four. Final four, folks. Your Gilmer Buckeyes have run the table since the Carthage game. We got a district championship trophy by district area and now regional champions. Your Gilmer Buckeyes, folks, are on a roll. They and are, look out. And let me tell you something. Tonight, the uh, 
the uh, I want to thank our sponsors. We've been playing sponsor commercials tonight. I want to especially thank our title sponsors, Godarzy and Young. Uh, they have been with us. They support these kids in every way. I don't care if you're in the band, uh, the drill team, the football team. Uh, if we had a chess team, they'd sponsor that. They always step up for our boys, and I just can't thank them enough. And and folks, don't look now. My but with Ten seconds left on the clock. Graham, Graham pulls just pulls ahead. 23-21. <laughs> And so it looks like Graham maybe who we're going to see next week. Unless we see a Cattle Mills miracle like, like what happened last week. It looks like that uh, they kicked the field goal and came up ahead. Wow, that's an interesting turn of events. But uh, I want to thank our sponsors for being with us. And, and uh, thank you so much uh, for all of our listeners at home. We will see you next week, folks, as we take on, looks like Graham, and we don't know where yet. But Most we'll let likely you know. we're going to try to play at Cowboy Stadium, according to Coach Metzel. We will see, and we'll make that announcement. Check GilmerBuckeyes.com. Gilmer wins 38-14. We'll see you next week.